into the darkness we shine. And out of the ashes, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one, no one like you. There's none like you. None like Come on you. and tell them our God is greater. Our God is greater. He's stronger. Our God is stronger. He is higher. But you are higher than him.
Command your hands, command your mouth. Command your bodies to give God worship. Come on and lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We want to build him a place. Oh God, we want to build you a place this morning. We want to build you a place so that you can come. God, because we want miracles to continuously happen in this place, oh God. We just want to worship you, Lord. Does anybody want to worship him this morning? Does anybody want to worship him? Isn't he worthy of all of your worship? Isn't he worthy of all of your praise? Oh God, we just want to worship you. Oh, we just want to worship you. You say.
unto God. And we are blessed to be standing here before the altar of fire and power. And it's because of a man and a woman of God who labored for decades to erect such an altar. Come on and let's honor Come on. the man and the woman of God. Praise the Lord. Come on, our apostle. Talk to Dr. Anderson Norwich. Oh, give God praise. Come on and lift up your voice. <laughs> For the man of God. Rabbashoto. Oh, we bless God for our apostle. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we give him praise oh, for yes. our dearly beloved. Prophet of God. Dr. Manny Nowlitz. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, honor them. Honor to whom honor is due. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glorious be unto God. And each and every one of us is here. Amen. Because there was something that was on their life ah, yes. that changed our lives. The anointing of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. From one generation to another. Amen. Praise and God. And many of you are standing here today oh as God. the curse breaker. Hallelujah. The curse breaker. Hey. In your family. Jesus. Because of what you receive Praise from God. this man and this woman of God. So come on, let's honor them. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And instead of generational curses, your lineage will be receiving generational blessings. Oh, my God. Oh, from this day forth. Until forever, amen. You declare it and you decree it now in your generation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So we thank God for our pastors, amen. He said He will give us pastors after His own heart and they would feed us, amen. What we need. Oh, it's not always been easy, it's not always been what we want. Oh, the flesh was kicking and screaming. I saw you all Friday night, like, oh, Jesus. We got to purge yet again. Oh, yes, we ain't carrying nothing. Nothing. We ain't, listen. Oh, and yesterday I saw me, I saw those papers in the air. I saw this man, he threw that paper on the ground. I will kill every demon in here. But that's what it takes. Radical faith. Hallelujah. Don't take any of it to 2024. God has too much in store for each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're purging. We're in the purge. Amen. For 2023. And we're facing and we're going to be prepared for 2024. Are you glad on this morning? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise, believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We would just like to extend a hearty welcome to all of you that are tuning in to this broadcast on today. Come on and give God praise Hallelujah. for our Facebookers, our YouTubers, hallelujah, and our extended Zoom audience from all around the world. Extended Come on and sanctuary. give God praise. Hallelujah. We give God praise for all of you. And of course, we invite you to participate in the service at this time. Please go ahead and take out your devices in Jesus' name and go ahead and locate this broadcast oh, yeah. and you do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Make sure that you also locate yes. the broadcast firstly. Then go ahead and like, send up some comments. Go ahead and share the broadcast with everyone. Be a blessing to someone on this last Saturday, oh my God, in the year 2023. Come on and give God praise while Hallelujah. you're at it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then help those who need to subscribe. That's right. Also, amen, Minister Kim, our subscribers are increasing amen. daily. We want to, of course, keep that momentum going. So we invite you to please also, those of you that have not yet hit that subscribe button, you make sure that you do that today. Go ahead and hit that gray subscribe button. Make sure that you subscribe to Maddie Knowledge yes. TV. Yes. Amen. As well as that you are a part of Prophet. Maddie not 
knowledge on Facebook. Please ensure that you have the correct spelling of, of course, those names. And if you need assistance at the end of the service, you can always go to our social media table on the outside into the concierge area. And those attendants out there will make sure that you are subscribed to the right pages. Oh, yeah. This is our time of testimony here at Believer's Faith. And as you can see, as... Uh, Every single day, we have an already established line there. Yes. But if you have a burning testimony that you would like to share, we invite you to please come from all across the building and line up to our right and to your left. We'll make sure that you share on today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is just such a powerful time yes. during the service. Amen. Because everybody gets to participate. Yes. And you can do the work of an evangelist and getting the word out there. Amen. Amen. Somebody still needs to know that Jesus still saves. Amen? Yes. And I don't know about you, but the ministry of Jesus Christ yes. is very, very much alive. Amen? Amen. And active in this church. Amen. I can't speak for any other church Amen. or any other fellowship or ministry, but all we can account, we've seen miracles. We've seen signs and wonders. Amen. We've seen demons cast out. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorious be unto God. The ministry of Jesus Christ is very much alive. Amen. Yes. And so we are truly grateful. Amen. For all that God is doing. Amen. So go ahead. Send out that link. Amen. Drop your comment first and you click that like button on YouTube it says like, but on Facebook you have the thumbs up. Hallelujah. So you click that thumbs up, amen. And you like the broadcast, drop your comment and then share it to everybody. Keep that conversation going. Yes. Amen. And as you've heard so many people come up and say they were just scrolling through YouTube looking for something, amen, some form of hope. And the link just popped up. My God. And what you're doing right now, you're helping the link, amen. To pop up. Hallelujah. In Jesus Glory name. to God. So that's why we encourage you to do so. And you can do it throughout the entire service. Amen. Keep commenting. Keep liking. Keep sharing. Amen. Somebody is always looking and someone is always searching. Amen. You know, Minister Kim, we are just so blessed to be a part of this ministry. And you know, our assignment is so simple here. It is just to declare the miracles of Jesus. As we said, this is our time of testimony. But you know, Minister Kim, as we look over the audience, we see so many persons who have been healed. Yeah. You know, as it relates, not only healing, deliverance, deliverance. financial breakthrough. I mean, I'm looking at Brother Timothy over there, healed from cancer. My you know, God. I'm looking at Sister, I think that's Sister Sharon over there from the UK. I mean, a 9,000, I think, pounds that was completely erased. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So many different miracles. Yes. So many people healed <laughs> from cancer and different diseases. But Minister Kim. We heard a testimony just a few days ago. Well, I think it was on Thursday where the woman said that, the, the, you know, the, the gentleman's heart healed itself. Yes. But Minister Kim, you and I were talking on yesterday about this riveting testimony that we, that, that, that we know that wants to come forth. You know, from that lady from Johannesburg yeah. and Minister Kim, we, Prophetess was live on the 6 a.m. prayer. Come on. You know, on Christmas Day, see an apostle was side by side and the woman of God called out. She heard, from, I think, a word of knowledge or something of that nature. And she heard, she said that, I, I'm seeing this person and this person is struggling with an air condition. An air condition. And, you know, she said that this person is struggling. And she began to pray concerning that individual. Now, this lady who is all the way in Johannesburg, Africa, she, she's in a different time zone. While we were up at 6 a.m., it was 4 p.m. her time, but she tuned in. Her brother, for as long as she can remember, was deaf in both his ears, in both of the ears. And her testimony is that after the prophet prayed, she heard all of this commotion because the young man sequestered himself from everyone. He, secluded, he was just... That, that self-confidence wasn't there. He couldn't hear. He couldn't understand anyone. He was in his room. She heard after the prophet prayed about 20 minutes later. She heard all of this commotion going on downstairs. Everybody shouting, shouting, screaming and what's not. And uh, 
She went downstairs and the first question she asked was, who's hurt? Who's hurt? What is the problem down here? Because that's how they were carrying on down there. Just to find out that the man who was deaf for all of his life, Jesus, hallelujah. his air popped open. Hey! Listen, Minister Kim, when we heard that testimony, we didn't even know where to put ourselves. A man who was deaf all his life, he could hardly speak because he cannot understand words. His air popped open. I pray to God that God will allow yes. that woman to testify Hallelujah. because the woman of God prayed and the air supernaturally opened. This is the God that we serve. Hey, hallelujah. Come on and give the Father praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory to God. Oh my God. We give God praise. Supernatural encounters. Supernatural. No man or woman can do such miracles or have such an influence with the Spirit of God except God is with them. Amen. The hand of God is resting mightily upon our pastors, and we are grateful. Oh, yes. And we are beneficiaries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Yes, ma'am. Wow. We, got, we us honor the Lord. And I'm understanding there are so many more so many testimonies. More. Listen, people of God, you are connected. Amen. Yes. There's something great. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue now with our in-house testimonies. testimonies. Amen. Please come. Hallelujah. Give us your first name and tell us where you're from. Good morning, believers. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Simone, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I just want to give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, who is the head of my life. And I want to honor Apostle Edison Nottage and Prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage. Amen. I'm so Amen. grateful and thankful for the connection to this altar of power and fire. Yes. My testimony is a few weeks ago, I had a dream where I was back home in Guyana and I was in a wheelchair. And when I woke up, I felt like my two knees was so much in pain and it was not like mine. And things was just crawling over my body, from my head to my toe, all over. And I could not sleep, but I keep praying. I called the call center, I prayed. They prayed with me and everything. And I keep persevering. I use the tools and everything, but last night, Come on. I came to Florida in so much pain. I sat down halfway through the service Thursday and halfway last night. But while prophetess was praying the prayer of deliverance last night, I, while I was sitting over there, I felt like a fly just pop out of my head and was sitting here. And I was like, go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and saints of God, from since then, I have not felt anything crawling over my, my body, all over my body. This morning, I vomited. I felt so free because my prophet said affliction will not happen a second time. I Amen. Amen. So I just want to give God all the glory, yes. all the honor, all the praise Hallelujah. for my deliverance. And f forgive me, I cannot close the year without, I felt like I did not give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise and thanks for my family deliverance from my one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Prophetess went back to the 1914s and called my grandmother name. My God. That cursed my mother and all 10 of her children to poverty, lack and insufficiency. And I cannot cross over with giving God thanks, glory, and honor. And I Hallelujah. thank you, prophetess and apostle. God bless Hallelujah. you, saints of God. Oh, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, generational blessings. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We give God glory for a prophet and apostle who can break the curse Amen. from over our lives in Jesus' name. Come and testify. Amen. Please come in Jesus' Share name. Share what God has been doing. Give us your first Hallelujah. Name. Hallelujah. Good morning, believers. Good morning. My name is Shireen, and I'm from Dominica. Amen. I would like to give praise and honor to God who is the head of my life. I would like to honor Apostle Edison Nordage and Prophetess Martin Nordage. Being here today, being here for this revival is so much of a blessing. It is so much of, it was so much of a, I don't know how to put it. I had to go through so much to get here. I don't know how I would have made it. I was offered a job in August to do a deco for a wedding. The wedding is tomorrow. I denied that job. I My said, God. I have to be here. I have to make it here. I wow. denied the job. Wow. A few weeks after that, the, the lady got back to me. She said, no, I need you to do my wedding. I said, no, I am not going to. I can't make it. After that, September, October, no November, God has provided for me because I still didn't know how, how I would make it here. God provided for me. I got other jobs. I got other things to do that would help me to get here. Yes. When I got here on Thursday, going to the hotel to check in, gave my name. Mom, we can't find your reservation. I'm like, no, how can't you not find my reservation? Can you give me your confirmation number? It should begin with such and such and such. I'm looking at my confirmation number, and it doesn't begin with anything that she tells me. So I said, here's my confirmation number. You can't tell me that I'm not, I'm, I did not reserve. So I said, you know what? The devil is a liar. I stood there. I looked at her again. I said, did you find it? She said, yes, ma'am. We got it. So thanks be to God for that. Hallelujah. Yesterday. Yesterday, I came in here fine. Everything was well. Before prophetess came out, when apostle was on, I started feeling so sick. So sick. I'm like, what is happening? What is happening to me? My stomach, something began to twist in my stomach. My head started to pound. My eye become so blurry. I'm like, what is going on? I came in so well. Everything was well. I was, I was going to get up and just leave. Because I'm like, no, no, something is wrong. When prophet has started to pray, I didn't have the strength to get up. I said, you know what? My strength comes from the Lord. So I stood up and I prayed. I prayed. I don't know how I got the strength because I could not stand up. I wanted to rip this wig out of my head. My head was pounded. in. I stood up. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. Next thing you know, I'm on the ground. I started to twist and turn, twist and turn. Saints of God. Everything left. No more blurry vision. Hallelujah. No more headache. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, come on, people of God. Hallelujah. That's it. When the enemy fights, amen. I got it. Oh, you got to fight back. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And she received her deliverance. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. For that testimony. Please amen. Come. come and testify. And testify. Share what God has done. In Jesus' name. Good morning, believers. I want to give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for bringing me here today. I also want to thank, bless prophetess and apostle Edison Nordage. I love this man and woman of God so much that I adopt them as my spiritual parents. Now, me coming here is just the favor of God in bringing me here. But I want to thank prophetess and apostle for that 6 a.m. morning prayer. Oh, yes. My God. Prophetess, you don't know how I was longing for that. And I was urging and hungry for that. And I just want to give God thanks. No, in November, 18th of November, I was sleeping. And then the Lord woke me up like about 1 a.m. in the morning. Get up and pray because... Prophetess taught us to pray at 12 and 3. So I usually, my body sometimes just wake up at 3 a.m. to pray. And I'm still getting up to pray for my 6 a.m. prayer. I started warfaring, warfaring, but I don't know what I was warfaring about. And I was just praying and praying and praying. And when I watched the time, I see it's like 20 to 2. I said, no, I have to take a rest because I have to get up for 3 a.m. I went to bed, woke up, go on the 6 a.m. morning pray. Pray, everything. Ah. Yeah, one of my sisters called me. And told me, boy, that was good this morning. I said, yes, that was good. But usually I don't answer my phone early in the morning. Like after prayer, I just go back in prayer. And then I just answer it, you know, later on. So I saw she called me. I answered it immediately. 
What if they just say, oh, Hilma, I see like one of my brothers sent some video, some um, picture on, on the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp. So I say, what is that? She said, I don't open it because sometimes he said nonsense. I said, hey, don't worry about that. Ah, when speaking, there comes my phone from Dominica. Oh, I forgot to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm from Dominica, but lives in Maryland. <laughs> sorry, my apologies. Right, so when she, call, when, she, when she go on and the girl called me, she told me, Hilma, you know that your brother business burned? I said, what? How you mean burned? She said, yes, it just burned, caught fire. I don't know what I was doing. I started screaming. I said, Lord, he just built his little business. He don't have one year yet, and they burned his business. Anyway, I, my sister called me back, and she told me, look, I started crying. He said, Hilma, get on the altar. Let I went on the altar. She on the altar. My other sister on the other line. And we started praying and were praying. And I tell you, when I finished, I felt so good because I know Power Amen. is doing so much thing for us. And I just want to give God thanks and praise. Amen. But right now, everything is okay. They did not take his life, they burned his business. But I thanks God that he's a Amen. Come on, give God praise. She's Hallelujah. testifying about divine protection. Amen. Because of the 6 a.m. prayer. Amen. And our pastors teaching them to pray. We give God glory for that testimony. Hallelujah. We will continue now with our in-house testimonies. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Trifon. I'm from Brooklyn. I want to first give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, for he is truly my father. I want to give prophetess and apostle all the praise and the respect. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak again. I'm going to be very brief. As you know, last night, I was delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Powerful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, the deliverance was really a deliverance because everything that prophetess said was precise. Little did you know, or as I would say, as they would say in the Bahamas, did you know, did you only know, that a week ago yesterday that I was in the hospital screaming for my head like I was going out of my mind. I was in so much pain. They did a CT scan. My whole stomach was inflamed like the size of a watermelon. They found a fibroid. There was so much pain in the body I could hardly move. I began to say, I said, I'm going to die. But I remembered prophetess said, you will not die. You shall live to declare the word of God. And I held fast on that word. And I kept praying. And I thank God for the 6 a.m. prayer because that prayer was my fuel Amen. throughout the day. But last night deliverance. After I just delivered and I watched the video. Oh, goodness, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My God, thank you, Jesus. After I went down and I got up, I saw a prophetess. But not only prophetess I saw, I saw a glow of light. There was a glare like glitter with oil. And I said, my God, prophetess, because I'm telling you, the last thing I remember was me shaking. And then I went out. But after she held me and hugged me, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. My God, no more pain, no more Hallelujah. pain, Jesus. no more pain, no more pain. I can Jesus. walk, I can run, and the swelling has gone down. The head is good. I feel light. I feel free. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Thank altar. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. And what a powerful deliverance it was, amen? But totally healed and totally delivered. Come on and give God praise. We will continue now with our Zoom testimony with Amanda all the way from Michigan. God bless you. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes go can. ahead and testify. 
All right. Um, thank you. I want to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. I just thank you, God, for everything. And Apostle and Prophetess, I honor you both. Thank you so much for constantly, constantly pushing me to grow, to become a more um, mature Christian each and every day. Um, today, I just want to testify about the 6 a.m. prayer and the prayer retreat. So um, starting back from last year, um, this time, or, you know, like last year, like fall, I was um, trying to do the 6 a.m. prayer. Like, you know, my prophetess began to talk about the prayer watches and I would, I was struggling to pray. Like I would get up at six, you know, alarm would go off and I would just shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. And I would honestly just go straight into like every morning I wake up, you know, after I finally woke up after the 6 a.m. after failing to pray and I would just beat myself up with just self-pity and just like you can't you can't pray like you can't just 12 minutes that's it and I would just beat myself up so having a 6 a.m. prayer right now is just a complete blessing like when prophet says that she's proud of us that you know we are up and we are going she's like look at y'all look at y'all I'm just like so glad I'm like yes I'm like really pushing and it's just truly helping me now you know praying other times is a little bit hard but that was that's all because of um over the summer my family went through a moving process which is just a whole nother testimony in itself but that moving process brought just like a whole state of worry to me and i'm just like the spirit a spirit of worry just came over me and it was one 6 a.m prayer that before i could even realize that i was even worried and so much was going on in my mind that i couldn't even i didn't even know prophet is just briefly i mean i was just dose or you know just um not even in a blank stare, not even knowing. Prophet has called my name and I just didn't even know. I'm just like, oh, whoa, what is she talking about? So I had to go back and even realize what she um, said to me, but she just said to be encouraged. And when she said that, that helped me to realize I was just so worried and just so much was just going on with me. And so I began like before that, it was just a struggle. And then sometimes after it was a struggle to pray, to read, to fast. And I was just, you know, just constantly just trying to fight. And as much as I was trying to shake it off, I could not shake it off. But the prayer retreat this weekend, um, just over the last few weeks, I mean, it's been deliverance after deliverance after deliverance. And I mean, we connect to this altar, things break, things shake, and things are like taken out and things are just totally turning around for me. And I'm just so grateful and thankful Providence and Apostle, I can never thank you guys enough for constantly pushing me to grow as a Mormon Christian more mature Christian each and every day. I honor you both. To God be the glory, honor, and praise. I thank you for this altar and all Amen. Thank you. Wow. Come on, Jesus give God praise. Come on, bless the Lord. Such a heartfelt testimony. My God. But that's when you know somebody has changed your life, amen? And you appreciate what they've done. So we celebrate that young lady, amen? And we give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For another life that's been changed. Hallelujah. Come and testify. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so excited to be the host. I give honor to my God, who's the head of my life, who's my king, and my savior. And I give honor to my prophetess and my apostle. I'm so happy to be the host. I'm from Queens, New York, and my name is Sophia. The word of God says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, yes. but God delivered them out of them all. Amen. I've had many times when I've come into the house and waved all my urgent matters. And at the start of the year last year, crossover, I sowed a seed and I said, God, I needed to release a matter that I have in court. So I sowed a seed to release a seed yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. And in September, hallelujah. Yes. In September to remember. Come on. The court ruled in my favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And glory to God. October, my status changed. My immigration status changed. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. My attorney began to ask me, what do you do? I said, I pray. And from a fiery altar, and all we do is pray. And she began to ask me, how you pray? Because I've had cases for years and years. And your case came in and it's moving. Hallelujah. And so I told, told her to bring up all the cases that she has. And I prayed. prayed over them for her. Glory to God. I had to do an interview with immigration. They called me in for an interview. And brethren, I went in for the interview. The immigration officer took me in his office, sat down. They were talking. Up until now, he has not said a word to me. He just asked me for my one document. And he said, okay, I'll go in the system to update it. 
she, we went into the bathroom and we started to glorify God. She's asking me, have you ever seen anything like this? I said, you tell me you are the attorney. Have you ever seen anything like this? She has been practicing for 30 years. She said, I have never seen anything like this. She says, continue to pray. But I'm connected to this fiery altar. Amen. In December, hallelujah. Glory to God. My bosses were meeting on my behalf. The enemies have been meeting on my behalf for a long time. But in December, I'm telling you, brethren, if you think the enemy is fighting you, trust me, God has his people also fighting and rooting for you. And my bosses met and they decided to give me an exceptional increase. You don't have a testimony just yet? Stick and stay. Come to 6 a.m. prayers. Come to the house. Join online every single time the prophetess and the apostle comes on. And trust me, God will deliver you out of all oh, yeah. your afflictions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on again. <laughs> Glory to God. Did she just get three testimonies in? <laughs> She's sharp. I like that. <laughs> Y'all come on, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> For all that God is doing in our life, amen. To God be all the glory. Come, let's continue with our in-house testimonies. Good morning, believers faith. Good morning. Hallelujah. I am so glad for my place here. I thank God for this fiery altar. I'm a part of this altar. I praise God for he who is the head of my life. And I give honor to Apostle and Prophetess Maddie Nottage. I've been a part of this ministry for two years, and my life has never been the same. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise God for this ministry. Thank you, Jesus. I have two quick testimonies. I just want to say I received a white envelope to right. September. Oh, my God. I felt pressed to sow a seed into Apostle's life of $100. Not a week later, I received $500 deposit in my bank account, right. and I don't know where it came from, but God, to God be the glory. Most recently, my second testimony, um, I just found out that I applied for a grant to get an uh, associate's degree in edu um, childhood education. Two weeks ago, I just found out that I was approved. Thank I'm going to be Jesus. going to school for free. Free laptop, free tutoring. I don't have to pay a dime for books or oh anything. God. God is good. My praise God. God. Thank you. God bless you. Y'all come on, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Financial breakthrough, amen. Blessing and increase. We give God praise for that testimony. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Great things he has done and is doing. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, we look like we have still a long line there of testimonies. Well, we do have Sister Joyce in. I can see her from here. Hallelujah. <laughs> She's right there at the right top of the screen. Zoom. Hallelujah. If we can kindly bring her up, operators, I, I can see the smile from here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We'll hear testimony from Sister Joyce Lynn right. from Africa. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. I want to thank God who is the head of my life. And I want to honor our prophetess and our apostle. They are my spiritual parents. I love them dearly. I am nothing without them. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with them. I have two, two quick testimonies. So one is going back to October this year when I joined the ministry. On the 19th of October, I had just finished my morning prayers and um, switched on my TV and their prophetess was. And I'll never forget that there was a black door in, in, on, the, on, the, the, on the stage, um, a black door and a white door. And she closed the black door and she was running people through the white door. Yes. through their victories and their deliverance. That's and right. I stood up in my beliefs and I said, in the spirit, prophetess is taking my hand right now. I don't know her. I don't know the ministry, but I know this is God. And I ran with her. And I got my deliverance that Sunday from that Thursday night. The Sunday night, I was sleeping and something woke me up. 
and it led me to the kitchen to remove all alcohol that my husband and I had in the house, remove everything that is wrong from the house, went straight to the dustbin, threw it out, and ran seven times around the house while my husband and the kids were sleeping, not knowing what was happening, why I was doing it. I came into the house, started praying and praying and praying, and for a second there, I realized that I was praying in English, of which I could never do. Um, I was born again from... 13 years old and always used to pray in my mother tongue but that night I started praying in English and then I went over from speaking as praying I went to speaking in tongues and the tongues sounded exactly like the ministry of beer from I and I knew that this was God something is happening here of which was supernatural of how apostle would would have demonstrated to us um, the next day the Monday I joined um, one of the broadcasts and um, prophetess mentioned that the church was busy with uh, fasting and you guys were already in your 21 days. I decided to join in because the eight, um, the eight, um, she gave eight points of how to fast. I think one was brokenness, repent, and then she said surrender and travail the word of God over you. And then I think spiritual intoxication. And then as she was mentioning them, I realized that everything that she's mentioning was happening to me. She was here with me, guys, before I even know the church, before I even decided to join. But she was here with me that Sunday night in the spirit. And she was leading me to a next level of which I've been praying in my life that I wanted to get, understand? And then... Um, Christmas Day, this is the second testimony, and Minister, I want to thank you so much for that power, power in the ministry, delivering, um, delivering my testimony this today and considering it. Um, our our uh, country is seven hours ahead of you guys, so right now it's exactly quarter past six um, in the afternoon. On Christmas Day, um, it was one o'clock. It was one o'clock when you guys had the, the six o'clock, the, the six a.m. prayer. So every day is one o'clock. So I have to literally wait for you guys, all of you to wake up, and then we have the six, six a.m. prayers. So we were ready for, for lunch, and I said to my, my, my family, you guys will have to excuse me, but I have a covenant with, a, with my God of which I am not going to break, and this day is dedicated for Him, and I'm connected to a fire altar. I went upstairs, started praying, and then as I connected, I was so happy to see my parents' boat on the broadcast. It was the best gift for me ever. I then began to pray and pray and pray. And while we were praying in the session of the 6 a.m. prayers, I realized that, oh my goodness, we're on a holiday at my, my family's house and I'm sure they're expecting me to be downstairs. But you know what? I am disconnecting myself from everyone right now. They will just understand God is before everyone right now. And then I started hearing them talking loud, loud, loud as the service was nearly ending because there was a time when prophetess touched her ear. And she was saying, I'm coming to, I can, I can see someone have a problem with the ear. And she was demonstrating it at the back. And she held the ear and she said, I'm not sure whether it's the left or the right ear. But as she was doing that and as she was praying, I started believing because my brother lost his, his, his hearing when I think he was, uh, he was seven, eight years, somewhere around there. And then as he grew up in his teenage life and his work career, it just went from bad to worse. And then he fell ill and then he lost his job. And then this year, he just decided that he's disconnecting him from the world and from the life because every December or every holiday when we gather together, he's always left out. He doesn't feel a part of us and he, he just lost interest in life. So I stood there as prophetess was praying and I just believed and I believed and I said, I receive it. I receive this prayer, Lord. I receive it over my life. Show my brother, show my family that there's a loving God and there's a fire altar and there's a fire, fire, a prophetess and an apostle and he will, they will come through in deliverance in this prayer for my brother now. And as I went down after the prayers, mighty God, my brother was serving and feeding everyone and his face changed and everyone witnessed it. It happened right in front of everyone's faces, guys. This is amazing. Until this day, my brother is rejoicing. My brother is changed. He has 
old, how can I say, the, the, the like he has, he has life again. He is, he, he feels for every day. He feels for every second, every hour now. So I, I'm so glad that I have the opportunity today to testify on his behalf. And I'm so glad for this ministry. And I'm so glad for our spiritual parents. May God continue to bless them for they, for they are our leaders. They are our Moses, hey? They lead us in the right direction. They're testing. They, they teach us. They teach us in the right way. They test them. I, 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 can, I can go on and on and on, but I am just grateful. If he could do it for my brother, he can do it for you. Believe in our prophetess, believe in our pastor. If they say run in the church, run for you guys have a privilege beyond a privilege to be in the presence there with them. But as prophetess always say that there's no distance in prayers. I believe it. I right. believe it. God, we got all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' oh name. Oh my God. Hallelujah. All the way from Johannesburg. Thank South you, Lord. Africa. Come on, y'all, give God praise. That's a miracle of God. And just as she said, if God is able to do it for her brother, what about you that are right here before the altar? Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please come and testify. Give us your first name and share the miracles of Jesus. Good night, believers. Good, Good night. morning. Good morning. I'm so sorry. I'm Good so night sorry. at Johannesburg. We I'm just so used to the night. <laughs> it is well. All right. Let me not waste any more time. First, I must give honor to God, who is the head of my life. Yes. yes. Doctor, Apostle, sorry, Apostle Nottage and Prophetess Nottage. Yes. My name is Andrea. I'm from Jamaica. You all know me. It's not my first time. So you know that something has to bring you to this fiery altar, right? I remember I was telling you about the story about my job. And that was the thing that brought me here. Even though it is still not yet resolved, the promotion. But I have other things in store. So I came this time for the, 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 the crossing over. So Thursday night, I was so excited about the oil of favor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, prophetess said that, no, 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 you can't pour dirty, clean wine in dirty vessel. So you have to clean up the vessel. So anyway, I agreed with her. So I said, if the Lord announced to her that we need purging, then we really need purging because she's the woman, the voice from God. So I take that with, uh, I just take it on. I say, yes, Lord. I will be doing my purging. So for my purging, it started with, I said, I'm going to go and fasting for the remainder of the days of the year. So I went, I started um, Thursday night. As the deliverance started Thursday night, when I started experiencing, I was sitting right over there. Last night, it, it was great. Uh, this morning, 3.39 a.m., when I went home, I went home after one. And I kept on, I was like on the threshing floor. I was there praying all of the things that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Loss, jealousy, perverseness, immorality. All that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I tell you, I was there. There was this like something was stuck right here. And I began praying, and I began praying, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, someone prayed for you. And then I began vomiting, but there was nothing but just fraud. So my God, I thank God for this fiery altar, because if it wasn't this fiery altar, and today it will be greater. I know that whatever residue, whatever remnant that is left there, it will come out in the name of Jesus. So I thank God for this fiery altar. I will not believe it. I will be staying right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, people. We are purging, amen. Praise the oh, Lord. Oh, because we're preparing the crossover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorious be unto God. We give God praise for that testimony. Let's continue now with our in-house testimonies. In Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is such a blessing to be here. I thank God and give all the glory and the praise. Yeah. Yes. I thank God for this altar. I thank God for my spiritual parents. 
My, pa- my mother died last year, and God blessed me with a new one. Prophetess. I thank God for apostles and prophets and their teachings and their learnings. Amen. I thank them for healing the um, call center. I thank the call center. In July this year, my husband nearly died of congested heart failure. I rushed him to the hospital. I called the prayer line. The doctor said he has 30 pounds of fluid over his chest, and we must admit him. And I said, Satan is a liar. And they had to do a procedure to his heart in order to get his heart back up pumping again because he has AFib. I called the prayer line, and I was like, wow, why did he put me on hold? He came to the altar, put my prayer request on the altar, and then my husband came back in the room. And his heart was like new again. And I was like, thank you. My God. Thank you. Jesus. I said, whoa. Nothing but God. Faith, trust, time. And in the mornings, I'm I'm in the 6 o'clock morning um, prayer meetings. Army. I'm prior Army and Navy. But when I work 12-hour shifts, <laughs> when I work 12-hour shifts, I'm tired for two days and I'm off. So I'm in the prayer room at 6 o'clock, and Satan tried to say, oh, no, you can't get up. And I said, like, heck, I can't, Satan, if I can get up for the Army and the Navy when I was serving, Come I on. can get up for God. Oh, yes. I give him all the glory and all the Hallelujah. praise Come and stay rooted and grounded forever and ever into this altar and this prayer ministry. And I thank God and all of you. Amen. Thank you, BFM. God bless. God bless, God bless you. you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Anybody else in the global prayer oh. army? Oh, yes. The Navy. The Navy. The Air Force. Any Navy SEALs out Hallelujah. Deep Six. Deep Six. Six. Navy SEALs. Team oh, Team Six. Six. Oh, Team Six. Team Six. Six. That's what she said. Oh, Team Six. <laughs> Team six! Team six! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> We give God praise in our testimony. Amen. Of course, Minister Kim, we just want to remind everyone that, of course, Prophet has released an instruction on yesterday. Today, we'll be going through the, another process of cleansing and purging. Please make sure that you have your Engeti drinking water as well as the anointed Engeti spray. All right? Make sure that you have that in your possession yes. for this powerful service on today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Please come and testify. Oh, come on. Give God oh, praise. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Come on and give God praise! Hallelujah! Testify! Thank you. Testify. My name is Nancy. I'm from Toronto. First, I want to thank God, the head of my life. Hold up your mic and lift up your voice! A powerful testimony! Oh, come on, bring it! Come on! Come on, give God glory! Thank you. Uh, I want to thank God, the head of my life. I want to thank Prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage. Yeah. Apostle Dr. Edison Nottage, thank yes. you. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to try to keep this short. There's so much I can say, so if anybody wants to talk to me later, I can share. <laughs> I know I only have a minute. Um, seven years ago, it all started. Um, my, brother, my brother got involved with a witch, and since then, my family shattered, my business shattered, my health. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to fix a dental procedure that went wrong. Not, I couldn't even hold my head up three years ago. I went to every doctor. Finally, I realized at the time I wasn't even born again, and I realized that something spiritual was going on. I went on YouTube, and I just looked up witchcraft deliverance, and that's where Thank you, Jesus. I found Prophetess Maddie. All right. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I started tuning in. I never missed a prayer or a meeting, and I have binders of notes. I take notes of everything. I did um, the uh, training for reigning, 6 a.m. prayer army. I'm there. I gave my life to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I started praying in tongues. At first, I'm hearing them pray. What are they doing now? I just pray in tongue all day, all night. And uh, coming here, I was thinking, I can't come here. It's $1,500 to get here. I don't have that money right now. And I just felt God was telling me, come, come. And I was calling the prayer 
line and I think they think I'm crazy. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to go. And the girl said, she goes, look, at Apostle said on Monday, just come. And I said, okay, I'm coming, but I don't know. I'm still nervous. On Wednesday night, I was listening to the prayer and uh, I said, Lord, just give me a sign. And that's when Prophet has said, the Holy Spirit is praying and for Nancy, telling her to pray for Nancy and that he wants to deliver me. And I just started right there shaking, crying, packing my bags, booked my flight. I just put one foot in front of the other and I got here and there's so much more, but I just, thank you. Thank you, God. My God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You saw? Yes. Yes. I got back to my hotel last night. And I just, I couldn't sleep. I've just been praying all night, thanking God, praying. I feel weight off my shoulder. Oh, my God. I know it's a process, but so much came off yesterday. And I'm just so excited for what God is going to do for the rest of the weekend. And I just thank God. Thank God for this ministry. God bless each and every single one of you in this room. An apostle and prophetess, thank you. Yes, amen. You. Hallelujah. Wow, come on, give God. Come, come on, on. y'all, give God praise. Oh, come on, give hallelujah. God glory. Come on, give God glory. Come on and lift up yeah. your voice. Bless the Lord for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And let's give him praise for the apostle hallelujah. and the prophet of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. God is indeed faithful. Amen. And we appreciate everything that our God has done. We don't ever want to take any miracle, any healing, deliverance, Amen. anything for granted. Amen. That's right. We want our God, first of all, to know that we appreciate him. Yes. Come on, let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's honor him. Oh, glory to God. He deserves it, people of God. Yes. He deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. So we bless him on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And definitely we want him to, to do, do it again. again. Amen. So come up with those hands together. Lift up your voices with a shout. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Even as we go into a time of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God glory. Oh, oh, come on, give God, God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, our God is great and greatly to be praised. At all times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, are you grateful? Lift up your voices. Come on and One give more him praise. Time. With a glorious shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and keep your praises high. Don't let it drop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. Oh, God, Give him a shout of praise this morning. He is the most high God.
morning. He's starting me on my way. He's the reason why we're living. He woke us up. Start us up. Hey, you're the reason. Walk us up this morning. Start it up. Hey, you're the reason why I'm living. Woke me up this morning. Starting me on my way. Hey, you're the reason why I'm living. Why I'm breathing. Hey, oh, you're the reason why I'm living. Why I'm breathing. Hey, oh, you're the reason why I'm living. Woke me up this morning. Hey, you're the reason why I'm living. Woke me up this morning. Hey, he's the reason why we're living.
praise the most high God. Shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody scream. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 He is the most high. He is the most high God. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him one more time. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now high five a few people around you. Let's just greet them, greet them, greet them, greet them. Before you take your seat, let's greet them. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Y'all greet somebody. Greet somebody. There's enough people in you. Yeah. 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 Come on. I say greet, greet, greet some people. While the music is playing, greet some people. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. This is your brother. This is your sister. Hallelujah. Find somebody. Find somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I want to stop singing. Let's play good music. I want to greet. I want to greet. That's what I want to greet some people. Come on, tell me y'all ain't greet nobody yet. Find somebody, man. Not only the person on the side of you. Find somebody. Turn around. Greet somebody behind you. Shake their hands. Give them a hug. Hallelujah. Come on, tell them I'm your brother, I'm your sister. That's it, that's it. Move out of your seat if you have to. Hallelujah. Find somebody to greet. Hallelujah. We are one. We are one. We are one. We are one. Come on. Fellowship, fellowship. Woo! Come on, people. Oh, God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Hey. Hey. Come on. I know you on Zoom. Hallelujah. If you can't greet nobody, if you nobody in the house, when you wave your hands or something, if you on YouTube, come on. You can send the link out. Send the link out. Send the link out. Send it out to somebody. Send it out. Say, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Send it out. Share the link. Share the link. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Come on. That's it. Come on. Woo. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Woo. Hey. Brother Timmy, hallelujah. Ah, yeah, come on. Hey, hey. Ah. Woo. Woo. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Woo! My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said the greatest of all these is love. Hallelujah. The greatest of all is love. Faith, hope, and everything else, the greatest is love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us love one another. Come on and give him praise. That's it, mama. Go ahead. Get your victory run. Your victory run. Yes, 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 yes. Your breakthrough, your breakthrough, your breakthrough, your breakthrough, your breakthrough. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on. Yes. Yeah. That's 
as we give you have to do. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Oh. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Saxon, not like the valley. <laughs> yeah, come on, beat the drum. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Woo! Hey. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo! All right. Yeah! Hallelujah. 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 Come on and praise him. I I hope you all can find your seat. I hope you know one take your seat while you move, but God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Awesome God. This is what happens. This is what happens after you purge. You feel free. Light. The sister said she ran home last night and she was free. It was light. 
Like, like a load being lifted off of a shoulder. That's what happened when you purge. You know, he was carrying around all of that old weight. All of those old baggage. Hate and resentment and lust and hallelujah bitterness and unforgiveness and all those things you were carrying around. And now you're purged. Hallelujah. And so you're light, you're free. You're free. Now you could praise. Hallelujah. You know, you hate, you, you, you hate some of you was carrying around some, some people who, you even forget what, why you was mad with them. You even forget why you don't like them. But you still had them, or you still had something to get, so good to see you, mama. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, you just, you, you even forgot why you, Hallelujah. Any, anybody married in here? Anybody in, okay. And you're still living with your spouse? Okay. You ever got mad with your spouse and then you always mad and you all forget why you always mad, but you always still mad? <laughs> you didn't talk for a whole week. And by the time when you start talking, you're like, what was, what was, what, why were we mad in the first place? Nobody could remember. That's what some of y'all are. Y'all been, y'all carrying people around. Things happened so long ago and you don't even remember what happened. Come on, just give that up. You can't carry that with you into the new year. Release them. Release them. Because when you release them, you're releasing yourself. Amen? That's why he said in the Hebrews, he said, lay aside every weight. That's what he's talking about. All that weight that you're carrying. He said, lay it aside. Forgive them all that old baggage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody... Talk to take your husband or take your wife. Hey, they might have did you a favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, okay, y'all ain't, uh, that ain't funny. <laughs> okay, all right. Because <laughs> some of y'all still want him back, so okay. <laughs> My brother said he got married. He got divorced. He got married again. Then he got divorced. And he got married to the same wife. Hallelujah. So don't tell me God to the first wife. Amen. So don't tell me God can't do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Say according to your faith. Uh, you know, as if the poison is worth taking back. If he was a bomb, and the other person take a bomb off your hand, why you want the bomb back? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you release that. Let that go. Let that go, man. Let that go. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead. Take your seats for two minutes. And I, oh, Lord. You all, I only had 15 minutes, and you all think that I'm praising God just now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we, we, we just give God praise. Hallelujah. Tell the person on the side you, because we serve an awesome God. An awesome, 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 awesome. A mighty, 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 mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You been in pretty low, you could get up after you finish. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So we, we give God praise. Well, we're here. This is our Saturday morning session. I just love the Saturday morning session. Just something about the Saturday morning session. Hallelujah. God always show up in such a unique way, in such an awesome way, in such a powerful way. And every Saturday morning session that we have had, hallelujah, he always shows up. So we give God praise and we know that something great is about to, hallelujah, happen in, happen in this place on today. Hallelujah. I mean, we had a powerful move on last night and many of you were delivered and purged. You were purged. You were purged. You were purged. You were purged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we give God praise. And so we know, hallelujah, he that has begun a good work is well able to complete it. God don't never start nothing that he can't finish. So the fact that he started it, he's going to finish it. All you got to do is make sure you stay in position. You do your part and you be here. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so you be here. So we got tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. No service tonight. We want you to go home and rest. Amen? Because we don't want to hear no excuse tomorrow morning. 
but you're tired. We want you to be here tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. If they put you down to work, tell them you can't come in. Sorry, I can't make it in today. No, not, not morning nor night. I have the day booked. Sunday, that's Sunday I'm talking about. Sunday is booked the whole day. Because I'm telling you, you don't want to miss tomorrow morning, but oh my God. You don't want to miss tomorrow night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, listen. I know we, we say 7.30, but we have to move that up to 7 because I know God has so much things in store. <laughs> Hallelujah. For you on tomorrow night. And so whatever you do, if you have, I know, I know you wasn't that, 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 I don't want to call you crazy, but you wasn't that crazy to book your flight for tomorrow. I know that. I know you all know better than that. Hallelujah. If you did, you better call and make, make, make arrangements. And tell them you need to uh, uh, put that flight back for, for at least Monday. Amen. At least Monday. They ain't got nothing Monday, Tuesday. You know, tell them, uh, they, you know, they like to try to charge you sometime, but tell them all the time, you all don't have to be delayed. Y'all don't charge, and, and y'all, I don't charge y'all. I can't charge y'all. So, give me one delay free, please. Grant for my flight. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Y'all, y'all look like y'all ready for a move of God this morning. I mean, y'all, I can see the anticipation. The excitement is on your face. Like, like you really believe the day is your day. Who, who are I talking to? Though? This is my day. The 30th day of December. 23, it, it belongs to me. Hallelujah. I talking to anybody or I talking to myself? No, no, no. Okay, sit down a little one more second. Hallelujah. That, that's Las Vegas over here. This is Las Vegas. Uh, what's your name again? Brandy. I mean... I, I used to you and think I'm jumping and shouting. How come you ain't jumping and shouting? As your husband? Oh, he don't be there when you, he don't be home while you jumping and shouting. <laughs> okay, you better let him see you jumping and shouting. <laughs> All right, good to have you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I, I know the faces from, from Zoom because, you know, I, I be on YouTube and trying to push YouTube because we trying to build YouTube. Amen? Amen. We want to get YouTube, but our viewership as high as we can get it. So our friend that testified from Johannesburg, yeah. we want you to be our agent for YouTube in Johannesburg. Yeah. Let's get Mighty Nordic TV all over South uh, Africa. Johannesburg and all the surrounding areas. Come on, let's get this link going. Hallelujah, all the way up in Africa, South Africa. Hallelujah. That's the rich part of Africa, South Africa. Uh, at least that's what they tell me. I, I, I ain't been to that part. I've been to few out of the places. Hallelujah. They, 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 they was a little scary. Plenty of people. Hallelujah. We went, where did I went? Ghana? It's Ghana? Ghana, Africa. Yeah, I went there before. I remember the first, but who from Ghana? You? Hallelujah. What? Yeah, descendants right here. I remember the first time we were going and we were coming from the airport and the, the gentleman in the car and he stopped on the corner and then there's Looked like a whole mob of people came running to the car. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm locking the door. He said, no, 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 don't be afraid. He said, they're only trying to sell you bread. <laughs> they had these club in their hand. I thought it was wood. You know, they had the, you know the, what they call the French bread? That long. They, they had these, and they were running to the car. And I'm like, oh, my God, we gone. That was. <laughs> He said, no, 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 don't be afraid. He said, but whatever you do, don't screw that window down. Because he said, we wouldn't be able to leave from here. Because they would throw, all of them would throw bread in the car, and they ain't moving until they get their money. <laughs> so he said, do not screw the window down. <laughs> so I said, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we, we want to we wanna build this whole, we want to be, we, we are growing. We want to grow in-house. That's why I, I want you all to look at the faces. These are your brothers and your sisters. These are global members. So we don't always have the opportunity to meet like this. I wish we did. I mean, you know, on a regular basis. But 
hey, these are your brothers and your sisters. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so get to know them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this will be our, our annual every year. We will get together around this kind of time where all the global members can make plans to be down. Here, maybe in some, maybe next year we'll do it in another city as God leads. Amen? But we want to get together. Hallelujah. I want to get it. I got to shake so many of your hands on Thursday night and on yesterday. Hallelujah. Friday night. Hallelujah. Just want to shake your hand. I always see in your faces. Hallelujah. Now I get to shake your hand. You get to shake my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, we are family. Amen. Amen. We are family. And so, hallelujah. We want to thank God for all of you that came. We pretty much recognize everybody from every all of their places on last night. Anybody here for the first time? Who was in here Thursday or Friday? Oh, I just was going to say, all that deliverance you had, you can't be the first time. <laughs> Who was in here Friday or hallelujah? Thursday. We have a hand in the back here. We have a hand right here. Let's get them. Where are they from? Tell us where they from. Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida? Well, why you just reach? Um, I didn't reach because I could have left the family behind, but I was determined to Bring have them. the family with me. Yes. And so in order to do that, I came in uh, last night All right. and we got to the hotel and everyone was hungry. And yeah. I thought, yes, again, I could have left everybody, but yeah. being the wife and the mother and um, I said, what we're going to do, we're going to eat. <laughs> What we so, so, to, so I was here early. <laughs> you you brought you brought the family? The family's here. They're here? Yes. Stand up family. Let me just give you your my mom and your my mom, your who else? Mother. Who else? Come on, mama. And my husband. Which one is mama? <laughs> mama look young over there. Yes. <laughs> I am mama. Hallelujah. Hello, mom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you brought them. Yeah. Now, now let me tell you the secret next time. When you almost reach, you go to a rest stop and you buy some burgers. You feed them. That was the plan, but there was um, there was an incident on oh. the, the the highway coming okay. down, so that yeah. hindered us. Well, we had a lot. We had a lot of that. There was a lot of incidents on the roadways. They Thank said, God I'm here. Yes, and you made it safe because I have so many people. We had people that say they were in the airport from yesterday morning. Trying to get out of from wherever they were coming from, and they never reached here. And this church almost out last night. My God. So they had a lot of backup, a lot of delayed flights, a lot of, like you say, incident, wet road, slippery road, icy road, all of that coming down. If you were coming, hallelujah, from north and heading south, especially, hallelujah, you would have met a lot of that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But we give God praise that you're here and your hallelujah. family is here. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Go ahead. This young lady's first time from New York, Bronx, New York. Bronx? Who's your game man? Oh, I thought you traveled by yourself. No. <laughs> first time from Bronx, New York. Welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Who else? That's it. These are first timers, but we're here for the first time today. When Amen. we give God praise, we give God praise, we give God praise. God bless you, Hallelujah. Apostle. Go ahead, go ahead. I can pick you up. Keep talking. Hallelujah. This yeah. is Sister Tawana. Uh -huh. and she's all the way from Michigan. She drove 20 hours wow. to be here on this weekend. Michigan. Awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. If somebody else was from Michigan last night. Where they are? Hallelujah. They were here last night from Michigan. I don't know. They didn't wake up yet this morning. Hallelujah. But we thank God for her, huh? Yeah, Michigan. I know that. I know somebody. Goes, Hallelujah. You get company. Michigan is growing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Detroit, Michigan, they like to say, they like, Cars. huh? Cars. Say. Say that again. No, Detroit, Michigan, right? They, they, they like to get up. Yeah, okay. Y'all you all making me sound like y'all. City in Michigan. Yeah, I know, but it's the same thing. You drive from one state to, to, to the next. I've been up in that, we preach up in that area before. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. From BVI, got in late last night. It's not All my right. first time in the house, but it's no, my first time. No, it's your first time, time for this meeting. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good to have you. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Let's give God, God praise. Bless you, Apostle. We have some more hand waving. I, I, you all seen the dance? Go ahead. Go ahead. God bless you, Apostle. Uh huh. I'm coming from Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts. 
Boston, Boston Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Where, hey, where are you from originally? I'm from Haiti. Okay, I was trying to pick up the accent. That's why I asked. Because I know Boston, Boston's talk. That's, but, but where's Lynn, though? I mean, Lynn, Lynn, get other people represent. In the box? Huh? Lynn's supposed to be the agent to represent. <laughs> Where's she? All these Massachusetts and she ain't here. Come on, Apostle. Huh? Look at see Massachusetts. See all your people over here? Wow. Look at the back. All these hands waving. Massachusetts and Lynn ain't here. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? I want to see her on TV. I want to know why she ain't here. She in the airport? Huh? She's in the she's airport. airport. Look right up there. She's, she's in the, the airport. Oh. On our way. My God, she got on more clothes than I know. <laughs> <laughs> Call up there. She got more scarf around her neck. <laughs> Can hardly see her face. Okay, I know Lindo, Lindo missed these type of moves. Oh. That's why I was wondering where she was. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome, my sister. Good to have you from Massachusetts. Hallelujah. Boston, Massachusetts. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go, Brother Ryan. Good morning, BFO MYI. Uh huh. My name is Paulina. I'm from Dominica, but I reside in the BVI. The I BVI. Was, yes. I was supposed to be here since on Wednesday. I, when I arrived at St. Thomas from BVI, um, I had the wrong passport. For some reason, I took the wrong passport. And I took the BVI passport. Oh, I could okay. only travel to the USVI with that passport. I cannot come to, to, to. to the mainland. Right. Anyway, so he told me that's as far as, as I can reach. But I went at the airport to change my flight. And then I asked if I could go in. They told me no. They told me I need to get the right passport. I sent for the right passport from BVI. When I got the passport, they told me I have to go out of St. Thomas and come back in. Wow. Anyway, when I went, I went out and then I came back in. And then when I came back in, the girl told me, um, are you sure that you are coming back to Tortola? I told her, yes, I'm working. Then she told me to sit on the flight and then she will attend to me. But anyway, I showed up proof that I'm, I'm working in the BVI. And then she told me, when I reached at the airport, they told me that the same thing again. I had to sit on the flight, and they told me that they have to investigate. My God, yeah. But anyway, I wasn't, worry, I, I from, wasn't fearful at all. I just. I we're just from Bahamas, so we know a little bit about that. Yeah. You know. but and, I, and you know, sometimes, sometimes it don't even be procedures, just be one person. Yeah. You know, you just, you just need to go to the wrong person. <laughs> And you go to other agent and they let you go straight through. But sometimes you just get that one agent who have a bad attitude or a bad somewhere bad bad, day. And they will try to put you through all kind of ringers. Amen? But thank God you made it through. Thank God, yes. thank and you're here. Yes, thank God. So God before you. And who can be against you? Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Come on and give God praise. We, Hallelujah. We, I, I, I'm doing, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. All right. So, all of you, you wrote out, you wrote out your forms on last night. You prayed over it. Hallelujah. Your porridge forms. How many of you brought it today? All right. Oh, some of y'all going to get leave out. Y'all ain't follow the instructions. You would, huh? You don't have yours? Oh, I thought you said you, Yeah. We will prophet has told you all to bring, make sure bring them. Bring them. And then, and then, and then, and then. How many of you got your water? Hallelujah. That's all? Look at all these people ain't got their water. You better get your water. I ain't bringing over no Dasani. <laughs> Tell me right now. Life. Don't bring no Dasani up to me. Aqua Pure. Pure life. Uh, who? Pure Aqua Pure. Pure. That's all I, that's all I, I saw water. Bahamas Wrong water. country. Go get your Engedi. Spray and drinking water. Amen? It's right in the bookstore. You need that. We're going to pray over that. So you can take it with you. What you don't use today, you can take it with you. Hallelujah. See, one of the things, as a good soldier, somebody say, somebody say Team 6. Who say Team 6? What, what's that? Navy Seals. Navy Seals. You was a Navy SEAL? He killed Osama. You all killed Osama? <laughs> the girl knows you. She scared me. I tell you, you all can't just walk away. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank God he's dead. <laughs> but you all... <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't need no, no, no one to rise up against us right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Navy SEAL, Team 6. Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. So, so, 
So what I wanted to ask is, you was in the Navy SEALs. Now, how come you, your Navy, Army people, so it's, it's, it's no time? And I got to get in Texas because Texas people, the, the, the humble Texas people don't know time. Oh, that's the truth. <laughs> This one, she's putting her hand up. She's come from Dallas, but she always late. <laughs> then the next one is who's coming from Dallas. There she is. <laughs> yeah, but they all, I mean, I come into church and they say, oh my God, ain't nobody come to church. And then I will lay the church full. <laughs> no, y'all got to wake on that time now. We come, in, we come into Dallas. We come into humble Texas. <laughs> Hallelujah. And on the 2nd of February, for that whole weekend, y'all better wake on time. And those of you that are coming, come on, book your book, book your appointment. What I like with that, with, with 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 humble is you, you know, you're only about ten minutes from the airport, the, the building, so you can get. And the hotels, most of them, if you, you can get a good hotel right outside the airport, so you can get your hotel right there, and they don't, the prices ain't that bad. Hallelujah! And then you can just come right from there. You could even arrange with the most of them have um, courtesy shuttles. If you talk to the driver, they'll even drop you to the church. Give them one little tip. That's, you know, they, they'll do that for you. But you got, they like you to be on time. Oh, well, yeah, if you tell them 7 a.m., that bus could be there 7 a.m. If you're in there, because, you know, they, 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 they doing something they're supposed to do. So if you're in there, the bus pull off and leave you. Amen? But we want you all to come. Let's go. Dallas is our kicking off. I'm, I'm sorry. Humble Houston is our kick off. Revival for 2024. 20, and so, hallelujah. hallelujah. All of you begin to make your arrangements now so you could be a part of that. Hallelujah. And then we believe in God to get down to Georgia. Hallelujah. Somewhere around New York, New Jersey, one of those up in that area. Believe in God. Why, you know, we, 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 were, we were trying to work something with, 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 with uh, Roanoke, but Roanoke so far out. Getting flights up in there is like, man. So, so we're going to have to do something maybe like close to Roanoke. Richmond? That's, a, that's, that's close. Three hours? Oh, that ain't too bad. Hallelujah. So we may have to look something so... So once we do it in that area, then 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 Roanoke could come. They wouldn't have to go that far, because you know they'd be driving like 17 and 20 hours to get from there to here, from Roanoke to Florida. I tell them that I ain't gonna ever do that drive. That's a long drive. I mean, not in one, not in one trip. I got to stop and you know some states to lay out and relax and then go on the road again. I ain't doing that. Got to be a real emergency for me to do that continuously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, these are some areas, North Carolina, South Carolina. We're going to have to get up in those areas. We believe in God and come next year. So, we want you all to keep your, keep your bike pack. Keep your bike pack. Be ready to go. Hallelujah. Be ready to go because we're going to be moving. We're going to be moving. Hallelujah. We'll be in Florida and then we're gone. And we come back, we're gone again. Hallelujah. So, that's what it's going to be next year. Hallelujah. So, we kick off with humble Houston, Texas. Hallelujah. So make your plans the 2nd of February. The 2nd of February. 2nd of February to the 4th. Hallelujah. Beginning around about the 11th or the 12th of January. Hallelujah. We're going to go. We want to be going into a time of consecration and fasting. Hallelujah. For 21 days. Hallelujah. Amen. From the around the 11th or the 12th. Amen. We will start and we go into our time. Yeah, I know it's the birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, you know, we can, if we got to eat cake, we'll eat cake, then start. But, <laughs> we go, <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll celebrate, then start. Amen. But we want to go into time of consecration, prayer, and fasting. Amen. For the new year. And then, like I said, don't forget the new year. Uh, the whole month of January is first fruit month. First fruit month. So you can, whenever you get your special seed, we, we usually say try to give a hundred dollars a month, hundred dollars for each month, but that's on you. If you can't do it, we 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 ain't gonna ask you to do, but you can do, amen. But whatever you can do, make sure you give God a good first fruit offering, amen. 
How many of you ever borrow money to get a car? Or how many of you borrow? You, you didn't borrow the money to get the car. You just go in and get the car. You didn't know. But they had to send money from some lending institute into the car company. Sometimes it's the people who own the car who lend you the money. Same people. Amen? You ever borrow money to get close? Anybody ever borrow money to, buy, to get close? Anybody ever borrow money to go on vacation? I'm just, showing, I'm just showing you an illustration. So you borrow money for all kinds of things. Some of y'all get borrow money to get for your marriage, to get married, to pay for the wedding. Yes, yeah, some people just do that. Borrow money to pay for their wedding. Amen? And then some of you, you don't call it borrowing, but you go on in the store and you get a credit card to buy some stuff. And you max the card out before you leave. They approve you, and you max the whole card out. And, and then you walk out of there, and you was happy. So if you could borrow for everything else, people say you shouldn't borrow to give something to God. If you could borrow for everything else, though, think about it. You could borrow for everything else. Amen. Now, I'm not, I'm not one to push you into getting in, in borrowing. I believe that you should trust God. But there some time comes a time when you say, you know something, I want to do something. And I need God to do something for me. And you got to make that radical move. There's something called radical faith. You got to make a radical move. Amen? I have to make a radical move. We have to make a radical move to come here. Amen? It was a radical shift. We, we, we are not from here. We, are, we were born in Bahamas, raised in Bahamas. Hallelujah. All of our family, most of them are still in Bahamas. Hallelujah. We had already established a ministry in Bahamas, totally paid off. Everything was paid. We didn't have, we didn't have a loan on the building, on the property, or nothing. Everything was fully established. And then God say, come, shift back here. Amen. And so that was a radical move. We have to make that move. Hallelujah. And, and, and you know, after a couple of weeks of being here, I said, God, I, I home sick. I, I, I won't go back to the Bahamas. Hallelujah. It's still there in the Bahamas. I get what y'all say. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, but I had to say, okay, I, I had to do what God say do. This is the longest I've been out of my country. The longest that I've been out of my country. Over six months straight. I've never done that. Never. <laughs> Hallelujah. But because God say do it. That's what we have to do. Amen. So some things it's called for a radical. Now one of the things that you have to do for this year. You have to have a vision. You have to have a plan. You have to have your goal. We ain't talking about resolution. We're talking about goals. Things that you want to accomplish. This year. And don't write no bunch of crazy things, please. You know, sometimes you tell people that they just I want to do something. No. Get a few things that you say, this I really want to accomplish. This is what I want to accomplish. In Abaca chapter 2, it talks about it. Amen? Uh, let me see if I can find it quicker than y'all. Just sometimes they stay long. Abaca 2. Verse 2 and 3. And the Lord answered me. While, you, while you're still trying to find God, you could write it down. And the Lord answered me. And he said, write the vision. Make it plain on the tablet, on your tablets, on your whatever it is that you your notebook. Make it plain so that you may be able to run. Or, or so he may run who read it. And that should be you. For so he that run, so he may run that read it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. Yes, sir. It hasten, it hasten to the end. It will not lie. Hallelujah. If it seems slow, but seems like it, it looked like it's taking a little while. What do you say? Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. What you said? You were saying something? The goal of fulfillment. That's, the harvest who wants the goal of being fulfilled. 
Go ahead, read it. That's the Amplified. I read yes, to sir. you from the ESV just now. Hallelujah. Give me the Amplified. For the vision is yet uh -huh. for the appointed future time. Uh -huh. It hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. Uh -huh. It will not fail. It will not fail. Even though even though it delays, it may delay. It may be delayed. Wait patiently wait for it. Wait patiently for it. Because it will certainly come. Because it will come. certainly come. It will not delay. It will not delay. So you have to have some vision. You have to have a plan for your life that you things that you would want to accomplish. Some of you, you should have done it last year when you came into this year, but you didn't do it. Now, it's no use. Writing out a vision if you don't plan to stick to that. If you don't plan to manage it. Hallelujah. What is the vision for? The vision is to remind you. Because as you go through the year, so many things are going to be happening. And it's so easy for you to forget. Hallelujah. That's why in, when you go in a crew on a boat, you go on a plane, they have a compass, they have radar. Because if the pilot just take off, he say, I'm heading from uh, Nassau to Fort Lauderdale. Now, he know that's where he's heading. But if he don't have that radar, that's right. it, if one little thing happened, one little bump, one little turbulence, and he could be off track. You're right, sir. And so the radar is there to remind him, and say, hey, you're going the wrong way. Keep him on track. Amen? Yes, sir. Come back on track. Oh, yes. When you hit that last turbulence, you, you turn a little bit, and you're heading the wrong direction. That's, what, that's why you got to write your vision. Because even when you go through some things, then you got to go back and look at the vision. What is it that I'm supposed to be striving towards this year? What am I supposed to be aiming towards this year? And that's what the vision, that's why you got to write it. See, some of y'all ain't losing y'all because y'all don't like here writing nothing. But I'm trying to help you. Yes, sir. Come on. That's a, if, you don't, if you don't have something to say, this is where we're going. This is what I would like to accomplish. Hallelujah. I want my family to be back together. I'm, waking, I'm praying towards that. I'm praying towards financial increase. Hallelujah. These are things. And so what I want you to do, write on that same paper that you, know, you don't write all your demons. I hope. I know that wasn't enough for some of y'all. Because some of y'all have a lot of demons. I would say, Jesus got seven demons out of Mary Magdalene. Seven. My God. She was a serious woman of the night. She must was doing some acrobats and all kinds of things. I don't know what the seven demon was. But he got seven out of them. Some of y'all got more than seven. Amen? But y'all wrote them down already. Now, I want you to write on that same paper. Maybe you got to flip it over to the next side. Leave some space because you haven't finished writing demons yet. <laughs> so go on the next side. Amen? And then you got to write things that, a few. I don't want you, I, like I say, don't write 10 and you know you ain't going to live up to that. Write some things that you know you're going to live up to. I would like to be married this year. To a saved man of God. Oh, yeah. A saved woman Amen. of God. Amen. Who have money. Oh, yeah. You're preaching, Apostle. Marie, you don't want him to have money? Huh? Or you don't want to get married? You want to get married? Good man. Marie's looking for a good man. Uh, give Marie the mic. Let us say that in... What, what's, what language you speak? Let, let me say that. Let, let us say that in, 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 in our language. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Just say, say, say that in your language. I'm looking for a good man. <laughs> huh? Say, he might, he might be watching. But he can't understand English. The sister come to me and say, Apostle, I get a man madly in love with me, but he don't speak no English. What should I do? I said, come bring him to church. We gonna, we gonna, Holy Ghost will teach him English. Next thing you know, she, two days, two weeks later, he was ready to get married. I say, oh, no, that one sounds suspicious. <laughs> he, he, he ready to get married too quick. Papers. Huh? Yeah, he's looking, he looking for something else. He's trying to get legalized. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
All right. You, you can, could you say it? You say it. Say it. Uh, si mon mari me voit, je suis disponible. Voilà. Wow. That, just what Jesus just said just now. Soumé, soumé, ma je suis soublé. Ah, well, I say that. Yeah, soublé, soublé. Ah, yeah, soublé. Yeah, what soublé mean? What soublé? Ah, you say soublé? I'm sorry? You say soublé? What do you say? No, I say mon mari, my husband. Mon mari? My... Okay, how you say it? Mon mari. Mon mari. Mon mari. Mon mari. She ready. Well, I got it. Why is she why on the screen and she talking? Let the guy see her. Let the man see her. Y'all ain't switch yet. Where my cameraman? Where my switcher? Oh Lord, I got I, I, I gotta fire some people now. They can't they can't even switch. That's it. That's all right. There. Say that again, Marie. Look at that camera right there. Look at that. Come on, Marie. This is your hour. This is your this is your five minutes. <laughs> He's coming. He's coming. Yeah. Say it. Say that one more time. Si mon mari me voit, je suis disponible. She's ready. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, 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 you know, you got to come here now. You got to come here. I got to meet you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's, these are things that you could write. You could write, you know, what you want. You want your family to come back again. You want to get closer to God. Amen. These are things that you could write. You want your finances to be increased. Hallelujah. You know, I found something about church people. They are deep when you talk with some topics. But they really want it. You know, don't mind them acting deep like, you know, like you see I was talking with a husband and some of them like they, you know, they ain't looking for no husband. You let the man come start talking to them. What, what's how different they got? They act deep in church. But hey, that's what we're here for. We had to help pray you through and point you in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so write, write, write the vision. Write those things down. Because we want to pray. We're going to pray. From the, if not this session, the next session, we want to pray over your plans. Hallelujah. And, and one of the plans that you must have in there is, is you can't leave God out. We know that, right? You can't leave God out. Amen? Hallelujah. And so we, we, we just want you to write that. We're going to pray. How many of you came for prayers today? There you go. Hallelujah. Amen. See that? Hallelujah. We did, I mean, we had an awesome, uh, we had a, 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 a congregational prayer deliverance session going. And I saw people were on the ground. Nobody touched them yet. Crying out, spitting up, bringing up blood, everything. Deep, deep, deep work. Amen? Root, root work was taking place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of you don't know, that's why some of you look so good today. You think it's the makeup and the makeup without you looking good. Huh? Bible says he beautifies the meek with salvation. Now, if you don't believe you look good, I, I can't help you with that. That's, that's between you and God. Amen? That's why we put it You, you got to believe that you look good. Amen? Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I look and I wonder, how some of these men get these pretty women with their wit? <laughs> so, <laughs> amen? Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. They saw something in that man. Hallelujah. Anyhow, so, we're going to move on. Uh, I want to read. Let's go to uh, next scripture. Boom, 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 boom. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Now we, we're going to read only verse, uh, verse number 3, verse number 2, verse number 1. Let's read those first three verses. Uh, and so he said, if y'all didn't get it, y'all can read. These are the words. Of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand yes. and walks among the seven golden lampstands. You want to take it from verse 2? Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
I know your deeds. I know your deeds. And your toil. And your toil. And your patient endurance. And your patient endurance. And that you cannot tolerate. And you can't that you cannot tolerate. Those who are evil. Those who are evil. And have tested. And have tested. And critically appraised those. And critically appraised those. Who call themselves apostles. Who calls, call themselves apostles. Special messengers. Special messengers. Personally chosen representatives. Personally of Christ. chosen representatives of Christ. And in fact. But in fact. Are not. They are not. And we I'm have many of them that go around calling themselves apostles and prophets and all of these things. But they are, they're not apostles of God. They're not apostles chosen or called by God. So not every apostle, that, every person that calls himself an apostle or a prophet is of God. you all got to know that. It's very important because he said in the last days, many false apostles and prophets are going to appear last days, in the last times. They're going to start popping up from everywhere. Everyone going to say they're apostles and prophets. So you got to know that all ain't real. All is not called of God. Amen? Amen. So you, 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 he said, but thank God to this church that he read, wrote to in Ephesus, he said, you hate, the, you hate their works. Read. But I found them to be liars and imposters. Uh-huh. They are liars. They are imposters. That's, what, that's one way you know. When they, are, when they, when they tell you something and, they ain't, and the thing ain't happen. Now, everything a prophet or apostle tell you may not happen in the first day or the second day. But after you have been going for so long and you ain't seeing nothing happen, then you got to check two things. One could be because of the poison that the apostle that gave you the message, or the second thing could be you got to check yourself. Have you obeyed the instructions that was given to you? Because some people, you know, if the doctor tell you, take this, and you don't take this, you go back to the doctor, you say, I still feel in the pain. The first thing he got to is, did you take the medication, the prescription? Then you say, well, I know I didn't feel like I need to take that. So he say, okay, then. Well, you can't hold me. I have a problem with me if I give you the prescription and you didn't fulfill it and apply it to your life. And it's the same thing as a, as a man or woman of God say, stop drinking. And you, you go on, you're still drinking. Jesus, when he did miracles, he said, go your way and sin no more. Amen. And they brought the woman to Jesus and they began to say, this woman was caught in adultery. They didn't bring the man. You all realize that, right? They brought the woman. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, well, first of all, whichever one of you all be without sin, you cast a first stone. I believe one of them right in that group was the man who was helping to bring the woman. Because he wanted to get her killed so she can't talk. Amen. So I believe one of them was the man. So the Bible says all of them drop their stones and they get up and they walk away. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to the woman, well, nobody condemn you. Neither do I. Go your way and sin no more. Don't do it again. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you get a command, some of, some of, some of you have problems following your command. Amen. And, always, and it's not always going to be easy to follow a command. Amen? I told you, it's not all, it wasn't easy to do this what we're doing. Hallelujah? We, when we first started, we couldn't bring all of our children with us. They used to come over and go back, come over and go back. But we had to start off, which is us. And then as God began to make the way, then more of them began to come over. Amen? Amen. And so, it's not always easy to follow a command. But I'm telling you, your best choice is to follow God's command. That's the best choice for you. Yes, sir. So you must, you must now say, I will have to do whatever it takes to do what God is calling me to do or what God has bid me to do through his prophets. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Read. Let's finish this up. And I know that uh -huh. you who believe... Which one you on now? Three. Go ahead. 
And I know that you and I know that you who believe who believe are enduring patiently are enduring patiently and are bearing up and are bearing up for my name's sake for my name's sake and that you have not grown weary you have not grown weary of being faithful of being to the truth faithful to the truth don't but never go weary don't never go weary in being faithful to the truth don't you grow weary in being faithful to God's word that's the truth amen Hallelujah. But I have this charge against you. I have you, this charge against you. That you have left your first love. That you have left or forsaken your first love. Your first love. Yes, sir. Not the first male human being you love. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about God. And I'm not going to ask the question, but many of you have left your first love. You fall, you fell back. If you look at where you are today, and you look at where you were when this year came in, many of you drifted back. Now, some of you came forward, but many of you drift back. From your first love. He said you are forsaken. Yes. You have fallen away from your first love. You have lost the depth of love. You have lost love. the depth of love. Of love. That you first that you had for me. First had for God. The depth of love. Amen. No more time for playing dollhouse. No more time for Using God as a spare tire. He said, I want your best. This is what the poison is all about. God don't God ain't gonna play second fiddle to no one or nothing. You don't want to be second fiddle. He said, put me first. Put me first in everything. I want to be first. I want to be before your husband. Before your wife. want to be first. That's what God wants. Amen? Amen. Say so you're falling. But but read, read, read the next line. So remember the heights uh -huh. from which you have fallen. Remember from where you have fallen. And repent. And repent. Change your inner self. Remember from where you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self. See, People, now you can go to, you can switch right over to uh, Revelation 3. We're going to read uh, verse 1 and 2, maybe maybe a piece of verse 3. Many people, they get nervous about this time of year. And I know when, before I really get into God and learn in God and know who God was. Because the preachers will tell you, they would make you feel like Jesus is going to come. That's how we grew up. In the churches that we went to. Like, you know, come in the house of God because the rapture might take place. Right, sir. And so people get fearful. And they start to come to church and they're going to be in church on watch, watch night. Many people have not gone to church all year. And we, we're, not, we're not trying to stop them from coming. Please don't tell them, don't come, let them come. Because maybe that will be the time when they hit the Holy Ghost, hit them for real. And their life will be changed forever. So we ain't trying to, you know, discourage you from coming. But people get fearful. And then once they made it into the new year, they slacken right back off. Say, okay, the Holy Ghost ain't come. You know, one day, remember the year they say Y2K. Right? And everybody was preparing for Y2K. Everyone was selling off and Giving off, and I mean, they was because they thought for sure this is it. Debt was gonna be canceled and all kinds of things. They wasn't checking, they wasn't even paying their bills no more. Some of them. And then that year I rolled over to 2000, and nothing happened. Amen? Nothing happened. Everything went on as normal. Hallelujah. And so that's what happened to a lot of people. Now we in the computer age. 
you all, you all, you all had a computer. The, 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 the company was selling the cars. So the computer attacked the man. That's what the name Tesla. I, I read that in the news. I saw that in the news. So I just, I just, I just quote in the news. Amen. And the computer attacked the man and took his claws and claw him in his back. <laughs> Tell you all that has begun. Hallelujah. So anyhow, I don't want to get too deep in that, but I, 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 I saw that. I quote that from a news uh, station. And so, and so we in this computer age. Now, let's go to verse three, chapter three, verse one. Hallelujah. So, 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 like I was saying, as she, as she get it, many of us get afraid, and we get, we, we start to get close to God. But once we cross over, it's like people go back to normal. Remember 9-11? Whoa. Everyone was, everyone was afraid. Amen. People were running to the church, praying like they never prayed before. But they didn't know what was coming next. And every time something like that happens, you have these people who go around, is this the end of time? Is this the last days? People start to ask these type of questions. Same thing that happened when, uh, you know, this pandemic. Is this it? This is it. I mean, this is over. Churches are closing down. You can't go to church. My God, who would have ever thought you to be in America and you couldn't go to church? And people got afraid. Now it's easing up. And they're still trying to don't let it ease up, go away completely. Every now and then they're threatening you with something. But you have to have a relationship with God that goes beyond everything else. No matter what's going on in the world, whether it's good or bad. Because remember, he said, at the very time when they say peace and safety, when you think everything is going good, that's when sudden destruction is going to come. So you have to be in the point where my relationship with God is so unshakable. Nothing is going to separate me like we read in Romans. Nothing will be able to separate me or pull me away from my relationship that I have with God. So you say you're falling from your first love. Repent. Now let's read these last three and I'm done. And then we're going to move on. No service tonight. You can just relax. Hallelujah. We're going to get you out so you can go home and rest. You know. Eight o'clock is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you can't slip nothing past y'all. Y'all do shop. <laughs> y'all do shop. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's read. To the angel, uh -huh. divine messenger uh -huh. of the church in Sardis writes. Uh-huh. These are the words of him. These are the words of him. Who has the seven spirits of God uh -huh. and the seven stars. Uh -huh. I know your deeds. I know your deeds. God know your deeds. So you can sit up in there and try to act like you ain't, you know, everything perfect. God know your deeds. That's why it's best you just be an open book to God. Don't go to God pretending. And I, like you, you have everything under 100% control. No. You need to just open up. Because God know your deed. He know what you just was doing. He know what you just was thinking. Some of you stop thinking it. Some of y'all need to stop. Amen? Some of y'all thinking but food right now. Stop it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He know, he know everything. Amen? He know everything about you. He know your deed. Read. You have a name. You have a name. Or a reputation. Or a reputation. That you are alive. That you are vibrant and alive. But. But. In reality. In reality. You are dead. You are dead. My God. My God. That's a rebuke. Oh, my God. If I've ever heard one before. You have a name. I'm a Christian. As a name and a reputation that you should be alive. When you say I'm a Christian, you should be lively. But he said, You're dead. Look at the person on the side. You say, Are you dead? You mean to tell me I'm sitting on the side of a zombie? Because 
use your name, but you're a Christian, means you should be alive. But he said you're dead. You're dead. You only have a, you only have that reputation. You only have the form of godliness. See, if you've been around something long enough, you know how to act it out. Oh, you're so right. Hallelujah. So some of you, you still speaking in tongues, but you speak, you're speaking in that old tongue that he gave you 10 years ago. Because you've you, you, you spoken it so much, you don't know what you almost could say it without even the Holy Ghost even prompting you. But you should have already graduated to a new tongue. Now, now listen, this is why when you, when the devil come up against you and you right there, but still saying shaka, 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 shaka. I'm not mocking your tongue. I'm just using one. Amen? And you say, I pray, but the devil ain't, the devil, the devil is still coming. Because you, you should have been to the next level. The devil, and the devil don't say, I didn't get no power. So he say, you are dead. You have not grown. You have the reputation of being alive. You have a name that means to be alive, but you are dead. Hallelujah. In what? In reality. In real life, you are dead. Slap the person on the side you one more time. Ask them, are you alive? Or do you just have a name that means to be alive? Amen? Amen? He said, you're dead. That's, what, that's the scripture. You read, you read your scripture, right? It's in the Bible. You have your name, your reputation is that of someone that should be alive, but you're dead. Hallelujah. So he said, but two, wake, wake up. up. Wake up. Shake him. Wake him up. Wake up. Yeah. Gotta wake up. Come on. Gotta gird yourself. Soldiers of the cross. Come on. Gotta get up. Yes, sir. Wake you up in the morning. If the, if the siren go on and you and you and you in the camp, hallelujah, as a soldier, you gotta jump out of bed no matter what time that siren go off, that alarm go off. You gotta jump out of bed. Then you gotta go and begin to get yourself ready. Hallelujah. You gotta put on your whole armor. You gotta get you in. Then you know you was running out with your armor on and you leave your weapon. You got to get up, jump up, wake up, get ready, put on your armor, get your weapon, and then report for duty. Come to the front line. So he say, wake up and strengthen. And reaffirm. Reaffirm. What remains. What remains. Of your faithful commitment to me. Of your faithful commitment to me. You got to strengthen the thing that remains. remains. Whatever little bit that is still there. Come on. Oh, That's God. what we brought you here for this week. You got to strengthen that. You got to strengthen that. Hallelujah. Got to strengthen that. Read on. Uh, we go, let me get out of here because some people like eyes getting heavy. Which is about to die. Which is about to die. For I have, I have not found. For I have not found any of your deeds completed of, uh -huh. in the sight of my God uh -huh. or meeting His requirements. Amen. And then what he say? So remember. Remember. And take to heart. Take to heart. The lessons you have received. All of the teachings that you have received. And heard. And heard over the course of this year. Keep and obey them. Keep and obey them. And repent. And repent. Change your sinful way of Change thinking. Change your sinful ways. Repent. The, the problem with the church is we don't like to go back and listen to the word of God. It's so easy in our day because we have YouTube. You can go on that YouTube. You can go on Mighty Knowledge TV and you can listen to a message that was spoke in January. You can find message that was all during the course of the year. Some of y'all don't go back. It's hard enough getting some of y'all to be on live. And when I say live, if I, if we, even if it's a rebroadcast program, but if we play that tonight, half of y'all ain't going to watch it. How you going? How you going? He said, you got to strengthen yourself. You got to wake up. 
And the only way you do that is he say, you got to go remember everything that was preached. The word that was spoken to you. You are on the line for another prophecy. You even can't remember what God's last prophecy to, was, to you was. You say, why the prophecy ain't come to pass? You don't even remember the prophecy. But you want a new one today. Hallelujah. I ain't knocking prophecy. I'm just showing you. People just like, won't be a part of everything. So this year is the year to bring some of those prophecy, prophecies to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the year for you to pray some of them and make it happen. In the existence. Hallelujah. This what this what this what you're gonna aim for this year. You know, I don't just want to get ten prophecies and I still waiting on the first one. God, before you give me another one, let's deal with let me let's fix this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, who am I talking to today? Okay, I'm talking to myself. Before you prophesy, so Lord Jesus, help me to fix. I want this one to be wake up. Where's the money? Where's the man? Where's the house? Where's the car? Why that ain't manifest yet? Hallelujah. Where, where is it? Hallelujah. No, no, no. I, like I told you, it's nothing to do with the prophet. And a lot of times it's to do with you. You right, sir. It's to do with you. Every time I, go, I get a prophecy from, from God, I go on my knees. I say, okay, God, you say this will happen. Hallelujah. And, it and, and I pray until it happens. Listen, some things God prophesied that was going to happen for me this year. And it was November. And this, I ain't talking about no little $5 miracle type of thing. I'm talking about huge. I say, God? Now, I say, now, God? It's November. You told me something's going to happen in 23. It's November. Lord, oh my God. You said it's going to happen before the year is over. You said it. Hallelujah. And I say, God, you told you say concerning the works of your hand, command, I mean, remind you. I'm coming to you, you said it's going to happen. And can I tell you, we, the year ain't finished yet. But I tell you, God brought it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. He did it. He did it. I, I tell you, see, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, 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 everything I do, I try to wait on God release. You know, if you leave it up to me, I can just say it now, but. I got to wait on his release. But I'm telling you, I, I prayed and I, in November. It wasn't here yet. It was not here. Come on, Apostle. And not only did he cause it to happen, everything that I needed to make it happen, everything that we needed to make it happen, he made, he made sure that we had everything that we need to make it happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything. So, so, see, so don't just get in this like, you know, there's no, there's no drama show. You know? When God speak it, say, you begin to pray. Listen, if God say, your husband can change, you begin to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you pray what you got to pray. God, you say you could change him. Change him. Do what you got to do. I put him in your hands. Change him. Your wife is going to change. Pray. Hallelujah. You got to pray. You got to pray it through. You got to fight for it. Hallelujah. Some things you got to fight. Everything ain't going to fall into your lap. Come on. Some things you have to fight for. Come on, Apostle. You got to fight. Come on, you're looking for a big miracle. You're looking for a big breakthrough. And you don't want to fight? 
The devil going to fight you? Yes, sir. The devil going to keep fighting you? He don't want you to get it. You're right. Well, I hope one of the things that you had on your, on your, on your list was uh, doubt. Man, yes, that's sir. what's killing a lot of people. Yes, sir. Doubt. Amen. They can't have faith. They ain't have enough faith to believe God. Devil have them doubting. You got to get rid of doubt. Uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you you got to get rid of looking at, at, at what's going on around you. Ah. Give me Ecclesiastes. I'm, 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 I'm coming off the scene with that. You got to get rid of what, 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 all the things that, that, that's going on around you. You're so busy looking at the creature instead of the creator. My God. Lord, help us today. Come on, apostle. You're so busy looking at the creature. You're so busy looking at the storm. You see, if, you, if you're so busy looking at the storm, you ain't gonna never trust God. Hallelujah. You're so busy looking at what's going on. At your, you're so busy looking at your bank account. My God. Come on, you leave $10 there. And God don't wake a miracle. The bank ain't giving you no interest on $10. No way. And if it do, that could be one cent. When they wake it out, how they wake it out? It could be one cent. Hallelujah. So, so, so if you just worrying about, he says, it's not by. It's not by your power. It's not by your might, but it's by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. If you can't tap into the Spirit of God and trust God, that's how you're going. You ain't going nowhere. Your job was on, is only a means to an end. If you can't take what God bless you with on the job, and now let's bring it to God and say, God, Multiply this. Amen? Multiply this. I, I, I started, you got me? Let, me? let me read that, huh? Huh? If you observe the wind, yeah. I thought it was flowing with me. Just when I thought it was flowing with me. Hallelujah. You know, I told you where I started from nothing. Broke. Scrap it. My God. From a little island. Having nothing. Poor than many of you probably are today. Had nothing to show. Nothing at all. I, I, I grew up having nothing. Amen. I told you, I give you a little bit of it last night. I know you always wasn't listening. But I give you a little bit of it last night. What I went through. Hallelujah. I tried about every business that I could think. Because I had a mind that I'm supposed to make it. So I never give up on trying. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. I told you what I, I told you. I used to have to hide the car. True story. Somebody the other person is not say talk about that. <laughs> okay. I'll give, you, I'll give you another minute about that. I used to have to hide my car. Because it was up for repossession. And I used to have to take it down to the neighbor. My God. And pull it around inside. And then walk back home. Amen. And I would watch the tow truck. Every evening. Driving through the corner. Looking for the car. The car never home. So then eventually the people from the, who, who, from the bank call and say, where's the car? I say, what car? <laughs> the car that we, 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 we lend you the money. I say, the, the car is home. You're a liar. We've been coming through your corner every day to take the car. I said, oh, you all can take my car. That's not your car. <laughs> that belongs to the bank until you finish paying us off. I said, I sell the car. 
How could you sell something that don't belong? To? I sell it. What you could do about it? <laughs> so tell the people stop coming to the corner. Just so they ain't gonna see the car. Then I went to the point where I was taking the neighbor license plate and switching them. They didn't, it, the neighbor didn't even know. That I, was, I was switching their license plate. I don't care. I testify. I tell you what I where I been. I, I can I testify for two minutes. Testify, Apostle. I, I don't get to get on the line. You always run on the line so quick. I don't have a chance to testify. <laughs> <laughs> testify, Apostle. So the, the, the neighbor didn't even know until one time I switched the plate and I'm driving and the wreck of pulled behind me and cut me off. Say, boy, we was looking for this plate for so long. The name of God was up for repossession. I didn't even know. <laughs> so now they, I say, oh, Lord, I can get on this one. So I say, hold on, hold on. What, you, what, what type of car are you looking for? He say, I'm looking for a Nissan. I say, this is a Honda. He say, hold on. Yeah, this is a Honda. How this plate? I say, my God, somebody switched my plate. Somebody go and switch my plate. I say, sir, you see the plate in this? He said, boy, you better take that plate off the car. I was happy to take the plate off the car. And I got home that night, I switched the back. I said, my God, look, I almost set myself own self off. Hallelujah. You know, like one of the brothers in the church said, they got pulled over. They got pulled over. And, and when they got pulled over, they know that they had a warrant out in their name. So when the police ask them their name, they give him their brother name. Oh, my God. They say, what did you say just now? Boy, we got 10 warrants on that name. <laughs> they say they didn't know how to get back and say they said the wrong name now because they don't lie to police and tell them that they give them their brother name. Their brother got 10 warrants. He only had one. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's, that's what I went through. Amen. And then I, I said, God, you're going to you have to show me how to turn this around. I can't live like this. I can't get married and be and having my wife going through things like this. Hallelujah. I said, you're going to turn me around. I didn't turn around as quick as I thought. And then I get to the place where he was married. And he had light bill and rent and all these things. And then they come to turn off your electricity bill. You know, on the islands, it's different from here. You know, they come to your house. So I say, well, uh, can I help you? So he said, yes, we, they sent us to turn your, your electricity off. I say, why? He say, why? They <laughs> say, why? Only one reason we said, they said, yeah, you don't pay your bill. I say, but why you come on a Friday evening and you all ain't opening no more until Monday? I say, that's the day they's come. I say, all right. So he said, well, the guy tell me you could go inside. I say, well, you're in my yard. You can't tell me where to go. So I stand in there and I watch him everything he's doing. <laughs> I watch it just what he do. My God, when he leave the yard, I go and get my rubber glove. I know electrician. When I get my rubber, I say, I ain't gonna get shocked. <laughs> I get my rubber shoes. I get my, my, my screwdriver and my pliers. My God. The minute he gone, the light was back on. He, he come back out through the corner. He say, something, tell me you was gonna do something. He come back through the corner. I say, but if you look up at my yard, I say, you done turn me off. You just go and tell them you did your job. Leave. I say, you know where I go on the whole weekend without no light. Hallelujah. And I watch, and everything they ever did, I learned. That's the last time I come, the man had my whole meter in his hand. I say, what you gonna do with that? He say, we, they say, bring the meter, because everything we do, you turn this back on. 
time I act in all sad. And when he pull off, I say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I get in free current now. And I get one piece of wire, plug that back up on both ends, and current is flowing again. I had current, free current for the whole weekend. Every time I go out in the morning, I pull it out. Come back home in the evening, I plug it up again. Just in case they come during the day. I ran through this. this is, these are true stories. True stories. I ran through it. Then I got, I met God. I said, God, you're going to have to help. Uh, no, I was, when I was doing some of this, I was saved now. I didn't love the Lord. I ain't telling no truth. I, that, I wasn't a pastor, but I was saved. Oh, yeah, I didn't love him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and just like some of them crazy people who believe they could strap a bomb on and blow up people and they believe they do, they was doing the work of God, I was doing the work of God. <laughs> I think God could give me wisdom to do this. <laughs> as far as I was concerned. Y'all don't look at me like that, because some of y'all know, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know. <laughs> Amen? Y'all know what y'all do. But I say, God, turn this around. Show me how to turn this around. Amen? And that's when he, be, when he took me the scriptures. Hallelujah. And he began to teach us from the word of, teach me. And then he began to teach me and my wife from the word of God how to get it to turn around. So you can't be lazy. Amen? Amen? You got to be willing to follow instructions. The instruction for everything that you need is written in the word of God. Amen. Everything. To, to, to have a successful life and a blessed life, it's written in the word of God. Now, the question is, are you willing to obey that instruction? Some people are not. Some of y'all in here still don't believe in sowing. And, and, and giving of tithes. Some of y'all still don't believe in that. Some of y'all still struggle with it. And the reason why you struggle is because you, you wonder why you have to do it. But I told you, it's a matter of trust and it's a matter of love. Hallelujah. God wants to see that he can trust you. God wants to see if you really love him. That's all it is. Because what you give it's a joke to what you're going to get back. It's a joke. It's a joke. And notice he only said a tent and an offering. He didn't even ask you for 50%. He asked you only for a tent and an offering. That's all he asked for. And when I got that principle, and I began to work that principle, and I, st I, I stand before you today to tell you this is so true. That's when my life began to turn around financially. That's when things began to shift in my life financially. Hallelujah. That's when I began to see God began to open doors for me. And the, the, just like he said, he would open the windows of heaven and he would pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. We had a house and, and the house that we had in, in the Bahamas, the first, our first house, it was a triplex. And it was an area that the people didn't, we didn't have government water. And so we had to, had to get the water from in the well. And man, that water was nasty. And no matter how much we tried to purify that water and put things in that well, the water was still nasty. And so that was back up and the pint was saying, we're going to take it. And they were coming to take it. And before they got to come to take it, God made a way that somebody came. Because we, we started to put it in the newspaper, put it up for sale. For sale, for sale. Somebody came. They said, we want to buy your house. They said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. They said, I can sell this house. When they inspect this, when they turn this water on, they ain't going to want this house. So I said, God, all I got to do is pray. If I needed to sell it, I prefer to sell it, pay off, and have a little something in my hand. And some way, somehow, and I don't know if you can believe this or you can believe this, the people came, they inspect the house. They turned the water on. The water was clear. 
No stench, no scent. So why do you suspect so bad that you ain't do nothing in the bathroom and you think somebody do something in the bathroom? The people came that day and everything flowed like we had fresh running water. They say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. They came back another time for a second inspection. And the same thing happened. They said, this got to be God now. And that house was sold. And he was able to pay the bank. And he was able to have a, a few dollars in our hands. And this is, this is how we, we learn how to, I have learned, I told you when I, when I preach now and you hear me preaching faith, I ain't only preaching from what I read in the Bible. I'm preaching my life. I'm preaching my life experience. I've been through. I know that it is to don't have nothing. I know that it is to be, I know that it is to be back up. I know that it is to owe. I know, I don't been, I don't been there. I was over, over three million dollars in debt. In debt. And I had what God brought me from that right down to nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing. Paid everybody. Who, who, who we didn't, wouldn't pay it off, but they called us and say, anyhow, we, we just writing off the bill. We're going to write off the bill. Don't worry about that. We're going to write that one off. Tell it, God, the whole three million, I was, out of the, I was out of the red. I watched God bring us out. And I say, wow, this really works. As soon as we start waking the principle, he say, he who watches the wind, where's that? Ecclesiastes 11. Verse 4. Uh -huh. He who watches the wind. Waiting for Waiting all on all of your conditions to, to be, be perfect. perfect. He said, you will never sow. That's the problem that many of you have today. You are waiting for everything to be perfect. Can I tell you? Everything still ain't perfect in my life. Financially wise, there's so much things I want to do. He ain't gonna never be perfect. There's always things to do. This year, I told you, we are shooting. We got to, I believe in God before we close 2024. We want to have the property for this church in Florida. When we said that we was gonna do this in Nassau, on the Bahamas, on Carmichael Road, people laugh at us. We only had a handful of people. How you gonna buy property? Uh, it's about a little over close to three acres of property, and, and, and they say, how you gonna pay for any three acres of property? How you gonna put a building on this property without going to the bank with this little bit of this group of people that you had? And every step of the way, God showed up and had people to bless, had people to sow fifty thousand, thirty thousand, twenty-five thousand, hallelujah, hundred thousand. People began to sow into that. To the, that's why the building now is finished, completed, and we never took a loan on that building. That's right. Hallelujah. Never, never took a loan. Hallelujah. We never took a loan. And it's completed. Amen. And I'm believing God that we come right here and believe God to do the same thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to get the property. And me and me, like I said, we are, we are building Believer's City. That ain't only a church. That's shopping plaza. That's dwelling quarters. For when you coming down from upstate, you ain't gonna have to go whatever name a hotel you have to go and go through all what they're putting you through. And if you don't show up on time, they cancel your room. Hallelujah. And they give it to somebody else because they're gonna get a, more, a few more dollars. You're gonna be able to book and say, hey, I'm, I'm coming down. I need a room. I'm gonna book my room. Hallelujah. Your room will be there. That's what we believe in God to do. Hallelujah. And so, you know, the, the ministry, it's always, there's always need in the, in the ministry. We still believe in, like I say, all things come and help where we can help. And some of you wrote your stuff, but we ain't getting you because we only, we have so much coming. The need, help, we only get help as much as we can help every week. Not that we forgot you, but as people sow, as they give towards care ministry, then we use that to help somebody else. Amen? And that, we continue to do that. We never stop doing that. Amen? And so, but if you can keep waiting for everything around you to be perfect, you will never sow. He said, if you look at the clouds, you will never reap a harvest. Amen? So he said, just as you do, 
Read, just as you do, verse 5. Just as you do not know uh -huh. the way uh -huh. and path of the wind uh -huh. or how the bones uh -huh. are formed in the womb uh -huh. of a pregnant woman, uh -huh. even so, you do not know you do the not activity know. of God Come on. who makes all things. You don't know. You don't know how God is going to move. When you sow a seed, you don't know how God is going to come back and, 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 and bring your harvest. You don't know. But if you don't sow the seed, then you know. Ain't nothing to look forward to. So he said in verse 6, so sow your seed in the morning. Sow your seed in the morning. And do not be idle with your hands do in the evening. Do not be idle with your hands in the evening. For you do not know. For you do not know. Where the morning, the morning or evening, evening planting, planting will succeed. Will succeed. Whether this. Whether this or that, or that, or whether both alike, or whether both alike, you will be good. Will be good. You don't know. You don't know which seed gonna be the seed to break the camel's back. You don't know. That's why you can't stop sowing. You don't know which seed you put. You release in the ground. Sometime a farmer would plant a whole set of seed, and he barely gets nothing from that. And sometime he would go and he would plan again and he get a hundred percent. A bountiful harvest. You don't know how God is going to work. But one thing you do know, one day or the other, he will show up. One way or the other, you're going to get a harvest. Hallelujah. If you sow into the kingdom of God, God is going to show up and God will bless you. Hallelujah. There is no other thing on earth that can guarantee you like God. No other investment can it guarantee you. You know, once ago we used to think, I used to think, you know, well, put it in the bank, the bank is sure. But so many banks have closed down in the last 10 years that you know they're sure. And then they had Situation where the bank ain't closed down, but the employees in the bank were stealing the money. It's moving it from your account and putting it on a secret account. Your money. So all kinds of things. So that ain't no 100% guarantee. The banks even in that's why the banks, they don't want to do, they used to have most of the banks don't even do fixed deposit and like things like that no more. They're trying to get you to invest. They want to take your money, they invest your money. Amen? And so, and so you, the surest, most guaranteed thing that you have right now is investing into the kingdom of God. And if you stay committed to that, I promise you, your life will change. So I ain't have to run from the like people no more. I don't have to hide my car no more. Hallelujah. I ain't got to change nobody likes and Blake no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't have to. Because now God has, God showed me how to turn that whole situation around. So I could pay my light. I could pay whatever I need to pay. Because God made the way. Because I learned the principle, how to work the principle of God. Amen. Amen. And I want you to work the principle and trust God. Trust God. Trust God. People always ask me, Pastor, what can I do? I, I, need, I need ways to make some extra income. I say, come to God. Trust God. Be faithful with what you give to God. And then he said, he will rebuke the devourer. And then pray and say, okay, if you still feel that you want, there's some business you want to get into, pray and say, God, show me. Show me. Show me what, 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 where can I go? Where, can I, where else can I invest my money? What else can I invest my money in? After you have been faithful with sowing your seed and, 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 and whatever you have to give to God, then you say, okay, God, show me, show me. Don't just rush out there because you see somebody start something, you start something. That may not be the thing for you. Show me how. Show me what I should invest in. But I tell you the kingdom is the best investment. Hallelujah. That's, the, that's where you got to start. That's where you got to start. 
guy came to the Bahamas and he started talking about Bitcoin and all these coins and now he in jail. And plenty of them little people go and invest their money. And they ain't getting that back. Because when they don't do liquidations, you know how liquidation would. The people who invested the most is get first. Well, the lawyer could get theirs first. The lawyer could take theirs off the top. Then all the big time people who invested could, have, could get theirs. So by the time as they reach to you, ain't nothing left. So, you know, you, you got to be careful when you invest in these type of things. Even the stock market. Gotta be careful. Amen. A company could be doing good today and tomorrow they could close. We're closing half of our stores. How much time you heard that in the last few years? All these big name companies, I don't want to call them. How much of them done closed down shops? Plenty. Plenty. Oh, a, a lot. The big name stores. They closed down. So when they closed down, that hit the stock. That caused the stock to drop. And if you have money in that stock, that means your money gone. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a risk. But when you sow into the kingdom, it's a guarantee. It's not a gamble. Amen? Y'all get this? Okay, I got to stop. I got to stop. So, I want to I wanna open the floor and give you an opportunity to sow. I don't know. Y'all turn the AC off it. I know y'all was cold this morning, but I think the cold gone away. I think it's heating up outside. And so y'all got to bring it down again, please. Hallelujah. So this is your opportunity now. Online, on Zoom. I don't know if we're on YouTube, but if we're on YouTube, on Facebook. Hallelujah. Come on. It's your time to sow. Let's sow. Let's sow. Let's sow. Like I said, we opened the floor for some people with the $1,000 seed. Those of you that already, raise your hand to give that seed. If you have it, bring your seed today. Those of you that are not here and you would like to be a part of that, or maybe you were here and the devil was battling you in your mind, whether you should do it or not, and now you, you feel clearer about it, then sow that $1,000 seed. Sow that $1,000 seed. If you can, sow the 1000 then get as close to 1000 as you can. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, this is, this is how the kingdom flows. Amen? We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't operate like the world system. We, we, so we, it flows through giving and sowing. Hallelujah? He said, whatsoever man sow, that is what you're going to reap. Hallelujah? That's the person on the side. You say, don't close your eyes on a boss now. To the lady right there, yeah, touch her. She, she had her eye closed. She's in another world. Tell me, say, bring them papers. Let's deal with the demons. I never see more people come to life. I see more white people, paper shy, shaking in the rafter. When the, when the prophet start praying. Hallelujah. But all this is a part of service. Amen. All this is a part of service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, if you give, shall be given back to you. If you give, shall be given back to you. Hallelujah. And we all say, well, we have to, we have to give to, to, to buy the ticket to come here. God bless you. But I know you get money to go to the mall or to go to the shop. Take something out of that. Amen. I know a Bahamian's going to. If, if, if you can find a Bahamian that come to America and don't go to at least the Walmart, show me them. Show me, uh, what'd you say? Dino, Dino Jew Bahamian. Dino, listen, take and find, if they got to go, if church out 1 p.m. or 1 a.m., sorry. But listen, they're going to they be like, just drop us off. We can find a way to get back to the hotel. Drop us off. They ain't got no money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they got to go. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, always, I always spoke in front of uh, uh, Pastor McKenzie. I said, Pastor McKenzie, which day is your shopping day? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when she comes, she got to find one day. 
The call, I ain't gonna call who a shopping partner. Oh. <laughs> she go buy one day. She gotta go check out the shop. Amen. I can't tell you the last time I been shopping. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's how people, you know, and I'm not knocking that. I know you want to get your little stuff. But the, the truth of the matter is now, things shift change so much that it even ain't much cheaper to buy it here. No more. It used to be when you buy it here, you were saving some money. But by the time that you don't pay for it and care through customs, you know, you got to declare. Even though you all don't declare the right amount. <laughs> the, the custom officers now have a new way to deal with you. They average your bike. They, listen, I don't know how, when you go back to Jamaica and them places, I don't know what they do to you all. When you come back to the Bahamas, they say, open my bike. And they can dig through your bike. Oh, they go down inside. They can check it out. Amen? You know, when Laura used to come over so much, they start treating Laura like a bohemian. <laughs> they were treating Laura like a bohemian. Laura, where you is? I'm in the back room. What you doing in the back room? Americans supposed to walk straight through. <laughs> she was coming too much. The fella said, I believe you're running some type of business here. Let me look at this bike. And he never find that, but he still was looking. Does he feel like she was doing something? Amen? And, that's, uh, and they will check your stuff. And if they, boy, don't let them see one new item in there, then they can start estimating how much you spend. And you can't do nothing about it. Or you could leave your whole bag of stuff and say you want to query it. But boy, by the time you come back for that bag, you did and gone all through that. And ain't nobody will be know who being in your bag. And so you better off you pay that couple of dollars and get your bag out of there right then. Amen? But let this, let this be the now, the beginning of you trusting God with your seed. Yes, Remember what I say? Give more to God. Pray more than you eat. Yes, don't, don't, don't eat more than you give. And don't eat your seed. Amen? You all ready? Yes. Some of you all didn't look ready. But we got to go. Get your seed. Get your seed. Get your seed. What you have for me? You hold your seat or you got your seat? Huh? You couldn't bring the thousand. If you have the thousand and you want to put it in my hand, I will receive it. I will receive it. Hallelujah. And I want to bless you in Jesus' name. In the, can I have the oil? Thank you. In Jesus' name. Huh? Huh? God bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless you. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural increase. In Jesus' name. Is the rest of you stand up? Come on, we're getting ready to give. Huh? Get, you get, oh, it's on there. Okay, God bless. God bless it in Jesus' name. Bless it in Jesus' Sorry, I, sorry, I, just, I forget this, your phone. It's praying in your phone. Bless in Jesus' name. Supernatural increase in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, stand with your seat. Bring the, can, you get, can you get a pan to catch this? Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's stand. You're ready to give? Y'all feel like you're giving your best? If you ain't giving your best, put your hand back, get it, get some oil. Give your best. Always give God your best. Amen? Always give God your best. She's coming? Come. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, bless. Supernatural. Supernatural. Supernatural increase. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. One of you, one of you, one of you. Come on, I should slow me, slow me. I'm going to the deep thoughts now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. If anybody doing it online, I release, I want to release the blessing on you. As you release that hundred that thousand dollar seed, I release a supernatural blessing upon you. In the name of Jesus. The rest of you hold your seed. You coming? Come on, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What you was having a battle. You had a battle. God's going to bless you though. In Jesus' name. Supernatural increase. In Jesus' name. Father, bless it. Open doors for all. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hold your seat. Hold, your, get, hold them up. Hallelujah. Whenever you're doing your best, you need not be ashamed. Amen. Whenever you're doing your best. Hallelujah. Father, bless them today. 
We pray for every seed. We pray that you will send supernatural increase and supernatural death cancellation. But most of all, give your people a mind. Help them to trust you and to know that when they give it to you, you will give it back. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. You will cause men to pour into their bosom. You will open doors of favor, doors of opportunity for them as they be committed and consistent with releasing their seeds to you. Bless your people now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may come as the ushers instruct you. How y'all doing? Are they coming today? They're coming today. I like when they come. Because some people just put the offering back when you don't let them come. Because they, they, you can't see them at the pan. <laughs> but let them come today. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Come on as you come. Hallelujah. 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 Any birthday people in the house today? This is the 30th. 30th of December. Last Saturday? Yes, God is good. You made it. You, see, you saw another birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on as you come. Come rejoicing. Come rejoicing. Come believing. This is your day. This is your year. Hallelujah. And we're going to get ready in a short order after we have given. We'll get ready to receive our providence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come for God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on. Come rejoicing. Come rejoicing.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you for such a beautiful day. Yeah. How many of you are blessed by the teachings of the apostle of this house? Let's try that again. Let's honor the Lord for the apostle. Shout it out and say, thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Jesus. So we honor God today, and we had planned this teaching for tomorrow, but obviously the Spirit of the Lord felt that you needed it more today. So the Apostle has released a preceding word. Praise God. And it was powerful. Get, get knowledge, get wisdom, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because this is why the churches all over the world, they are failing. This is why Christians are failing. They have no knowledge, they have no understanding of anything. And so when you have no, no knowledge, no understanding... The devil will whip you and beat you. He will beat you so bad. My people are destroyed, Jesus said, for the lack of knowledge. Are you people here? Yeah. Do you need a coffee break? Are you sure? You don't need a lunch break? No. Let me know. That's not me. I promise. Uh, we need a break between the first and second session. We, we, need, a, we need a boots break. We, we want to look at those boots. <laughs> you people. <laughs> I am going back to... I'm going back to my Cinderella, Cinderella, my old things, because you people, praise God. But I am so grateful for this moment that we can share together. I believe these are the most profound moments. You know, when it's time, you know, coming up to delivery, when it's coming up to giving birth in the life of a woman or a mother, it is some of the most crucial days. Apostle and I, we are your midwives and mid-husband. And you get ready to give way to some great things in 2024. Are we agreeing here? You get ready to give way to some things that is going to be so unbelievably powerful that God has allowed you to come into our delivery room, to our labor room. Am I talking to somebody? It's our throne room, yes, it's our altar. Many things happen on this altar. Is it true? Many things happen. So today is no exception. Saying that you all pass on the coffee break. You don't want the coffee break. I know why some of you are thinking. When you look, we go on that coffee break and prophetess say, see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody say, ah, prophet, we know you a little bit. Praise God. But I'm so determined today that uh, today is going to be your day. Today is going to be your day. Sometimes you say, "Oh, oh, oh, I cry out. Say it on my lips. 
worship God. We're going to worship just for a moment. And, uh, but, and then we're going to deliver many of you. Deliver many of you. And today's going to be very different. Amen. Today's going to be very different. Now, listen, I want to explain something in the interest of time. Praise God. I want to explain something. Then we're going to pray. Then we're going to deliver. Praise God. I want, to, I want to get you in a position, question. Yes. Okay? Uh, anybody's given birth before? Yes. Don't put your hands up, son. <laughs> Amen. I know your wife has children, but... Uh. <laughs> Are we understanding him? Not one of you men in this building has ever had to open wide, come on, and bear down. And you might have been bearing down, but you wasn't the one pushing nothing out. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know what a woman go through to give birth to your big head child? Sorry, to your child. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you see the size of that head? <laughs> that watermelon. Sorry, that cantaloupe. <laughs> 12 centimeters. 10. No, Minimum. Some, some of the head is 12. Oh, some of those heads we have seen. <laughs> So, the, the cervix has to expand to, get cut. to that level. Flip. And if it does not, it gets a slight, what is called a slight slit. Yeah. Okay? And they do this because they want to get the baby out and they want to save the mother's life. Yes. They want to save both lives. Yeah. So, you, you, they are pushing, pushing, and it's just a little small. You don't even feel it right then because the pain of the pain is greater yeah. than the pain of the slit. That's right. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Say, hey. My God. But the thing right there, the goal right there, is that you want to deliver. Yeah, get this out. You want to get it out. Yeah. Get it out. And one of the things that we discovered in delivery is that, praise God, amen, that moment is a life and death moment. It really is. That's why you used to hear the old people say, child, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Because after all they went through to deliver you, nine months, 40 weeks, praise God, amen, in that womb, the womb is an incubator, and the incubator is a developer. And in that 30, amen, 37 to 40 weeks, that child, every cell, muscle, tissue, tendon, praise God, every fiber of their being is being formed and developed. That's why I don't know how can people kill such a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the warfare to get it out, the warfare to get it out, carrying was difficult. Now delivering for some people is even more difficult. The umbilical cord around the neck. The baby's supposed to be coming head first. It's coming foot first. It's called breach. All of these are different factors. But while that baby is in there, listen to me carefully. I'm going to deliver you today. I'm going to deliver you. Hallelujah. There was somebody the Lord told me I need to pray for today. Holy Spirit, you must reveal that person to me. He showed me that person. Yes. I don't even know. I hope they're here as I saw them in the realms of the Spirit. Listen to me. That moment is so crucial that if the midwife don't know what they are doing, yes, Lord, that child can die or the mother can die because it is only a matter of timing timing. You're working with what? Time. Time. And if you waste time, you're in trouble. So if you pass time in trouble, listen, two things. If you waste time in trouble, you pass time in trouble. Listen to me carefully. The baby, if it goes beyond 40 weeks, if it goes long beyond that 40 weeks, nine months, some of things begin to happen. The baby becomes too mature in the womb. And the baby begins to exist almost as a human. And it begin, begin to eat on different things in that womb area that is not supposed to begin to... Are you understanding me? So, it don't have teeth, but it can act like it's something. Even the baby, let me just say this, coming out, the, baby, the baby's skin will begin to wither. The baby begins to look old. You're 40 weeks now, you're there for 44 weeks. 
45 weeks. Who is going to bond that Andre the Giant? <laughs> so the baby has to come out when? At the right time. If the baby only is there for 24 weeks, 20 weeks, it's just even more severe because now this baby is not fully developed everything. It will take a miracle from God. So what they will know if that mother's going in distress, they will quickly begin to administer something that's called steroids or medication. At 24 weeks to quickly develop the hand, the lung. They want to put them on a rapid track because they really see this blood pressure is too high. Something is being compromised and this mother is not going to make it. People, listen to me carefully. Carefully. They say one foot is in and one foot is out. You can die or the child can die. Even after the baby comes out of the womb, if the, if the care facility does not have this, the ability to nurture Nico to our, uh, what do they call that unit now? The Q. To, amen, to fix that baby, hallelujah, then it means that this child is going to still suffer because if the oxygen is not there, if everything is not there, the child is going to do what? Still suffer. So, I'm giving you all of these scenarios so that you will understand why God has brought you to this altar and why he has not dropped you off to the church down the road and through the bush. And around the corner. I'm sure you are understanding. Jesus, why did you not drop me off to the church? In the bush. On the curve. Around the corner. Your deliverance is here. Your miracle is here. Your breakthrough is here. I said your deliverance is here. Now, please hear me hear my voice. Your deliverance can be available somewhere. Your deliverance can be available somewhere. But if you don't know that, Mm, whose fault is it? It's your fault. Now, you can also act like you have plenty of time. But the person know who's delivering you, there's a long line. She pregnant, she pregnant, she pregnant, she pregnant. She in labor, she in labor, he in labor, they in labor, we in labor. I got all day. I'm sure you all are understanding me prophetically. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, brothers. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have all day. No. So, and you don't have all day. If it gets stuck in the canal, yep. if it, you have to know. Some people, I need to move the cord from around their neck. Some people, I need to turn the baby in the right direction. My God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Listen, I am not in the business of killing babies. Hallelujah. Or killing mothers. My God. None shall on my watch. There will be no such thing. On the watch of the Holy Ghost. So what am I trying to say to you? Let's get, let's get moving. Let's get rhythm. Lots and lots of rhythm. Let's get moving. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you followed us, the pastor and I, you begin to understand our ministry. So, let's not waste any more time. Your cousin who you bought with you, I just say, cuz, I sent you the video to watch before you came here. <laughs> it's not my fault, though didn't watch. So pick up your bottom lip and let's get delivered. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Hey, yes, Providence. Come on, 
That's why we're not no joy tonight. Hey, not tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going all in. Yeah. So, tomorrow is going to be even more powerful. I am prophesying, predicting it in the yeah, spirit. Yeah, 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 Are you being already ready? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Listen to me. So, there's going to be some people showing up here tonight. Bram, bram, bram. They're coming to bram, bram on the door because they're in the hotel sleeping right now. Yeah. They're thinking tonight, I, I must rest for tonight. They're going to be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of them are going to bounce right now and hurry but put on clothes. But let me tell you, listen to me carefully. Deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is your portion. It is your gift from God. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, hallelujah. It is your entitlement. Hallelujah. It is what you deserve. It is what you what? Deserve. You deserve to be delivered. You deserve to be set free. So don't let anybody rob you of this opportunity to be delivered. Amen. I delivered some people, I believe, last night. Are those people here? Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Any yeah. of them? I touched you last night. Can I see some hands over here? Yeah, some hands yes. right over here, bro. Congratulations. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Congratulations. I touched you last night. So, listen to me. I want you to understand deliverance. Okay? I want you to understand deliverance. The way deliver means to be set free. It means that there's something that has you bound or tied up. And it means to be broken free from that thing. Stay awake with me now. Come on. Hallelujah. It means to be set free from that bondage. Something has attacked you. Something has attached itself to you. Now listen to me. A spirit, it, it does not attack the physicality first. It attacks the soul. The way to enter you because it is a spirit. Man is also a spirit. So it wants to go there to the arena of the soul and it wants to attach itself to you. So if a, a witch wants to hex you, or with you, or whatever, even though you're feeling something in the physical body, but it, 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 you, your spirit is what is, is, is what is attacked. The soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. Please, this is not training for rainy, but it's coming up on January 22nd. <laughs> you mean they didn't tell y'all? Where's Mr. Kim? Where is she? Where's Ryan? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Trina Ferrini. These people want to, they want to keep me to themselves, you know. Tell, tell them no, say never. Never. <laughs> Anyhow, it is January 22nd. Maybe they'll put it up for you guys today. And, um, you will be able to register after the session this evening. <laughs> but now, let me just tell you straight up. That one, that training for reading is going to be dangerous. And it's for seven days. Amen. But it's going to be online. It's tough. So no matter where you are in the world, you can engage that training for reading. And I need those days because I, it, it's some days, one day is just, <sighs> it's too much. And then that Saturday, we can come together. Amen, but amen, that week from Monday straight through for, amen, two to three hours, I will be teaching you, helping you, answering questions about deliverance, about the prophetic, about, amen, the angelic, about everything, amen, even in the, that session. So it needs to equip. People need to be equipped. Some people, they, they don't, everybody's not going to be Billy Graham, but some people are going to be Billy which means you may have to rescue somebody. Correct? And you need to know what to do. So even if it's for yourself. So I want to take this year. This year is going to be focused. Amen. Very focused training. Very focused teaching. Very focused impartation for those who are serious and committed to the call of God. Amen. The work of the ministry. So I want to just say that. I don't know what I was saying before that, but I'll keep talking until I remember. Huh? Deliverance. So if you're going to be delivered, it means then that you have, there must be an understanding. 
Deliverance, amen. So it must be an understanding. But let me help you what happens, okay? And this is not chuckles. I'm coming down. I'm not going to stay here much longer. I'm coming down there. But I want you to see something in that, praise God. A demon, a spirit, a spirit, a spirit. The spirit doesn't have a form. It doesn't have, it doesn't look like this. It takes on the nature of the thing it enters. So if it enters a dog, it will look like a dog. If it takes on the spirit of a bird, it will look like the bird. It's, it's, watch this now. Do you want to see a demon right now? Do you want to see a demon right now? Yeah. Everybody in the front row went like this. No, today, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to look like something. I'm coming to your level so you can understand. So if you want to grade me on today, just give me an eight right now. And it's too funny. It's too much. Okay. So let me show you a demon. Are you ready? Yeah. All eyes feast upon here. Don't even blink. A demon. A demon. Here goes the demon. Here's the demon. <sighs> Did you see it? No. Let me know. You heard it? Yeah. No, that was my voice. <laughs> okay. A demon. <sighs> A demon. Yeah. It is gas. It is vapor. A demon is air. Did you see it? Yes. Some people still saying no. Knock mama pot of coconut right there. Come, come, come. Okay, let's do it again. It is like this is what a demon is. Body knowledge 101. It is an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit. It is not visible. No rush. To the physical eyes. You don't see it. It is from a realm that is invisible. So it's existing by the millions, by the billions, by the trillions. Ranks. Different powers. Different mannerisms. They are in a different realm from this physical realm. The first thing God created in the book of Genesis, Genesis, Gene, beginning, was he created man, a living soul. So the soul and the spirit was created before this was created. This was not created first. After he was finished, the Bible said he formed man out of the dust of the earth. And then he breathed into man, and man became a living soul. So, the man that was created out of the clay and out of the dust, what the body is for man is a housing station, a train, a framework. A plane, a car, a house. I can give you many words. It is this house to carry spirit and soul. But in order for it to carry anything, it must have organs like a tree. Must have organs. And the organs work along with over 206 bones, 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 bones. That 
that makes up a skeleton structure. If not for the 206 bones, the structure will be like an olive. Like that guy in front of the plaza down the road, just as the wind, as the heat blows up in him. <laughs> he starts out starting up straight, but after a few minutes, oh, I'm gonna get you all. <laughs> then. So the 206 is next week. Organs are what? Necessary. Watch this now. This is one on one. There's five senses. And if you're missing one, you're in trouble. You understand me? You have to be able to see, hear, taste, smell. Everything that you see in the physicality exists in the spiritual. There's an eye of the spirit. There's a discernment of the spirit. Jesus said, oh, taste and see that I'm good. Everything that is existing exists already. When God put it in the body, the body was just supposed to be the station to house and care you. Hold on. As a spirit, as a spirit being, you attract spirits. Everybody say, I attract spirits. I attract spirits. That's, the, that's your spirit. It attracts spirits. It a what? It attracts spirits. It attracts spirits. It attracts spirits to you. So, and you are attracted to spirits. Did you know that? Yes. You are attracted to spirits. Spirits are attracted to you. That's one of the reasons why when a ghost enters the house, it, are you understand me? It looks for the spirit it wants to. So your spirit recognizes it before even you recognize it. You can walk into a building and you can discern things quickly because your spirit, you are given the ability from God to discern spirit. Oh, Mati, Mati, Mati. Let me know how it goes. So, because this ability lies in you to attract spirits, you have attracted many spirits over the years. Yes. Be real. Yes. Yeah. People still have their purge card. Yeah. So you attract many spirits. Let me see. Do you have a picture? Wave it up. Good. Watch this now. You're getting ready to take off. This woman come up with a whole photo. Jesus. <laughs> okay. So, watch now. saw it in the realm of the spirit. How do you see it? Like, it's, it's like a, it's, it's like a visual, like a film reel. But you see it like in advance form. You don't necessarily see it in the now time. You don't see it, even though it's real time, it's real time in the spirit. But we don't see it in, like it goes behind of the thing. So it's like, that's how I know people are going to be delivered. Like I already saw it in the vision on the realm of the spirit, and I already saw the demon walk out of the person. Before. Oh, Lord Jesus. So what happens is, is that it's just a matter of you having the spiritual ability to be able to catch up with the timing, hallelujah, of that reality of the spirit. Are you getting it? Yes. So it is just you having the ability to catch up with the timing of the spirit. Now, if it's just based on natural timing, you will be behind the time because the spirit is always, prophecy is what? Advanced knowledge. Prophecy is what? Advanced information. It's advanced. It's before it. Do you get it? So let me go back now. Deliverance. Where was I? It's, it happens as it's happening. 
something has entered your soul. Has it entered the soul? It already knows if you are a spiritual person or a carnal person. It attacks everyone. It will look to the whole family looking for that person that has, or it will go in the ancestor and it will look in the ancestor lineage for the type of things that have been open, altars that have been open in that family. If it was witchcraft, which is what I'm dealing with, some of which I'm dealing with today, it goes and it used that. It said, these people, their great-grandparents, practice obeah, yeah. practice voodoo. Yeah. In that small little island there, wherever, that city, they did this. They opened it and they raised an altar and they practiced on that altar some level of divination. So the demon says, if we're going to destroy the, the family, let's use this witchcraft, this craft that they open as an accusation. That's why the Bible says Satan accused the brothers. He is the accuser of the brethren. And he accused them day and night. So when you are, if you are going to court, you have to find a lawyer. You have to find a good lawyer. That can represent you. You don't mind how long I was practicing law. You want to know, do they know the rules of engagement? Do they know the law? Do they know what's in the book? So, this is how your freedom comes, people. There's no Scientology. There's no magic. There's no color. There's no nothing. It is what it is. Is the prophet qualified? Is the man or the woman qualified? What qualifies us? So I'm coming back to that. Just remember that point now. That's your one little assignment. What qualifies us? You got it? Okay. So when the demon attacks, the demon already know. He can attack your physical body. He can put sickness in that physical body. He can put pain there. He can put whatever there. But the thing he's after most is to enter the arena of the soul. Because once he gets you to agree with that pain or that problem or that cancer or that sickness, once you get in agreement with it, your body is not the way to agreement. It's your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions. Once he gets you to agree with the fact that you are poor, you will die poor. He said, we got this one. Oh, we got it. Once he gets you to agree, there's the agreement. How many of I should stop or I should keep going? Okay. See, this is vital. Because there are people who don't want to hear something like this. They're going to be right here. Deliver me. Deli next year, deliver me. July, deliver me. August, deliver me. October, deliver me. They're going to be right here. Because wisdom and knowledge comes from God. So, must enter the soul because the soul determines what type of spirit you are. If you have a carnal mind, a perverse mind, a low self esteem, if you are doubtful, if you are unbelieving, if you are lustful, if you are all of the full, you will then begin, your spirit will be just like that. You ever watch negative people? They never see the good in anything. Have you met them? They're called pessimistic. Yeah. They always have something. They look like vomit. Oh, they look like something. They, they, they talk like this. <laughs> so I must hurry. So what they do is that the demon knows I must enter. I must enter the life of that person. The best way for me to enter, I, they can attack the body anywhere. They can even attack the organ. They will attach themselves to that organ, but they do it based on the state of the soul of the person. And then when they get in, the, their longevity of the demon depends again on the state of the soul. 
and the spirit of that person. Because if they're carnal, if they're weak, if they're scared, that's why I dealt with that. We purge from fear. And we still have more purging to do with that. Because every now and then it comes on some of you. It takes you over. So that demon already knows if I'm going to take this whole house. Now this is what they do. They look for who is called and who is called the strong man. I don't care what long as I talk to you, why? Maybe you are a strong person. You just don't know it yet. A strong person. A good, strong person. So the devil comes after you. Maybe there's something on your head, a star, that says you're born to be great. Maybe there's something that the Lord said concerning you before you left the corridors of heaven. Are you getting me to come into that womb? I guess people are understanding me, you know? It's all right. If you sit down, it's okay. If you stay standing, I'm not, I'm not offended by you. I just have to tell you this. I don't, I'm not trying to preach either. But if you have to sit, I understand. Amen. If you stay standing, it's okay. It's all right right now. I'm telling you, you're safe. So, watch what begins to happen. The, the soul is now where? In between this entire being, there's the soul, the body, there's the spirit. The Bible said the spirit of the man will sustain him in his infirmity. But a wounded soul, who can bear it? Which means if your soul has been wounded, has been injured, has been shot at, has been dagged, jagged, punctured, it's hard to bear. Now, with that opening in that soul, anything can go in and anything can come out. Demons can go in, demons can go out. So you become a portal, an open portal. So this is why if you don't deal with this problem and be delivered. Watch out. If you have five children, two of them are going to come into that same problem. If you have four children, watch. One of them, the devil is going to still circle around that house if you have to circle for 14 years. And wait till that child turns 15. You don't have to believe me. You just have to. So, it's important that we war a good warfare for your soul, your mind, your will, your thoughts, your emotion, your emotional stability. Your mind. Because this, once this child grows weak like this, this child will continue to grow weak no matter how so pretty she is. She never believes what you tell her. She waits for a boy to come along with his jiggle self. And then he tells her, and then she believes him, and she's then giving herself over to him. So you have to look at all factors to gain the soul back in order. The demon is like, whoosh. Ah, he's there. He's gas. He's vapor. He's smoke. He's air. He's like wind. He enters just like that. He does not come dressed in a red suit with a pick four. That's Hollywood's phantom of Satan. That he appears. I am Lucifer. You crazy. If he came like that, everybody will know it's him. So he doesn't come like that. He has demons. And those demons are in the invisible realm. And when they want to enter you, they enter you from that realm. In that realm of darkness, there are many kingdoms. There's the marine kingdom. There's the astral kingdom. There's an elemental kingdom. There are so many kingdoms that it will take me all day and all night to reveal all the kingdoms to you. So everyone did not come for that revelation. That's why there's training for reading. That's why there's the Bible college. Are you ready for these things? They'll ask the person, what are you waiting for? 
Amen. So this year we're not begging people. You will see. Amen. You need to be in this in these programs. God has made them available for you. And the Bible College has made it very convenient. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm training for it. But going back now. So God wants to deliver you with a strong hand. So the thing entered you, but it did not enter you as a human. Imagine a human interfacing with you and entering you. It doesn't work like that. There are things that are coming that will look like that, and it will be by way of some level of artificial intelligence. But I'm talking about an interfacing with demons. And there's an interfacing in the spirit that we can do with the Holy Ghost. That one I'm not talking today. Today I'm talking about when demons have joined themselves with you. They join themselves with you as a spirit. A spirit. Can you see her spirit? No. But do you know one is there? Can you see her soul? No. Laugh for me. <laughs> you know one is there. Because there's an emotion. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling some type of way right now, thirsty or hungry, it's because there's something there working with your desires and working with your senses. All of these things work together to make man who he is be a very, very beautiful being. Very, very highly technological, intelligent being. That God created. When the spirit enters the man, he enters the man with an attitude that he wants to coexist with man. I want to coexist with her. He merges himself to such a degree. Remember what I told you earlier? He takes the form of that thing on. So if it was a dog he was going to possess, he looks like he has four legs, a mouth, and he even has a back. <sighs> if he enters a horse, he says, does a horse look like this demon possessed? <laughs> he takes that nature. And there are some demons that look exactly like some of these beasts, different beasts. So the one that comes into human, when he comes in, he comes in like this. Pay attention. <sighs> comes in as gas, as vapor, as air. But it's now, he takes on your shape and he can begin to look just like you. There's one the reason why most people when you ask them, do you have a demon? Me? <laughs> I don't know demon. Prophetess. Sorry, did I just say, Mati? <laughs> At that time, I could see the demon is right there looking back. Demon say, you heard her. She don't have us. So, the demon began to act just the way he looks just like you. That's why many of you don't know what to write on that paper to purge from. Because you're thinking, you know, it's not really you. It's not really it. It's just something that will pass over by your 40-something. And you're still angry. Do you get me? So the spirit then introduces himself to you. If he's a spirit of anger, he will do things to constitute anger in your life. He will open doors to get you anger. Do you get me? And so he exists as anger, but he does never exist by himself. Remember this and never forget. No demon exists by himself. Demons are collaborators. Demons are what? Collaborators. They collaborate a lot. They work together in some level of unity to bring about some level of destruction to the life of humans. Which is one reason why, another reason why you should not tolerate not one. Not even jealousy. Not even envy. Not even pride. Which is a quote of another day. I need a whole month to deal with pride. I see people around here, all around here. <laughs> You're telling them, out, 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 they're standing there. You tell them, get a sheet, they have no sheet. You see, that is not for me. <laughs> so anyhow, so the demon enters as that gas, as that wind. It's like a balloon. If I had one, I would have demonstrated to you. You blow it in the balloon, and right then the balloon is wiggly, nothing. As soon as you begin to blow into it, <gasps> It will 
balloons, it takes on a shape. And the only way that balloon will deflate is if you loose it, which is hard to do once you've tied it, is boy say, <laughs> So what I do as a prophet, I confront the demon and I boy say, out, depending on how long it be. That could be oozing for hours or days. And then I give you, just like the doctor, some antibiotics. <laughs> so that you will no longer be susceptible to infections. You could choose to take it or not. You could choose to take it to the scriptures given, the word is given, so that you will never be infected again. Amen. When the demon come inside you, it may come as one puff, one small puff. Watch. <laughs> one small puff. <laughs> he entered. Let's just say he came through the nose. Let's just say he came through your mouth or through your eyes or entered through your ears. However he entered, or he went, he went through somewhere. Some of y'all do like this. He entered somewhere like that. <laughs> My prophet? Yeah. yeah. He entered right there. You have Tom, Dick, and Harry. And everybody is going right through there. They have left their demons there. Right where they were said, oh, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Stay focused. <laughs> and some of you are wondering about your personality, why it's multiples. <laughs> so, it's fighting you from progressing. Because it wants to make sure it establishes a stronghold. The one that is there, that demon that's controlling that person who you love or who you with, is, is the reason why it's so hard and frustrating to you. Because who you are meeting is called the strong man. Please, anybody. Yes. Have you met the strong man before? The reason why it's so hard to get out of you out of you, away from you. He has become the strong man. Never mind, when he entered, he may not have been the strong man. But because you tolerated him. Now, one of the things demons love more than anything in the world, more than peas and rice and chicken and macaroni. <laughs> demons love, they love. Oh, they love this so much. They love when you cover for them. Yes. They love when you cover them. And when, when the prophet is saying, you got a spirit in you. Got, oh, no, I ain't got no spirit. They love that. They love that type of person. And when you tell them, come on, they say, I ain't coming out. And you say, yeah, see, I told you. She ain't going to let me out of here. And then you say, come out. And you say, I'm not coming out. You say, good girl, I love you. <laughs> Why? You cover for the demon. And while you're covering for that demon, that's a strong man that's killing you. There's another fella, fellow demon right in there. And you say, who are you? Who are you? And he says to you, don't answer. Shh. Be silent. Shh. Oh, I know who you are. Right. Arrogance, ego, egotistic. Do you know who I am, prophetess? I'm of the firstborn of the house of Jacob. 
in my former church. I was not just the eldest, I was the elder. <laughs> you got deep people like that in here. You'll never carry the mantle of God. Pride is of offense to us. It's very pungent. So, can I, maybe I need to wrap this up. Time is going. Ain't nobody agreed with me right then. Was he ready? <laughs> so, so you have to watch out. So, when the <laughs> yep, I've seen it all the time. <laughs> so. This you when you just existing, just existing. But then, when that demon really wants to enter you and take a hold of you, he enters you like wind. And so, this just you. This is you. This is just you. This is you. you but when you begin to when that demon want to enter you and he wants to take over you he puts himself in a position go in so you come in this thing right so he goes in and he begins to stay in here and he blows in Keeps blowing in until he becomes this. So there you go walking around with your holy prayer cloth on. <laughs> Amen. And your and your uh, your tam with your tambourine. Hallelujah. With your one tongue. Cha -cha 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 -cha. <laughs> and the demon is right inside there. Having a holy habitation. And you going from doctor to doctor thinking you got gas. Ugh. Thinking you got acid reflux. <clears throat> you got it. But there's something that is the root of it. Do you get me? That sickness. That disease. That disorder. That cancer. That depression. Something in you that keeps running people away from you. That's why you divorce, remarry, divorce, remarry. Divorce, remarry. Start a business, close a business, start a business, close. Something entered you. And it have you inflated like this. The only way it will get out is it takes a prophet, a man of God, a woman of God. That is carrying a level of spiritual power. Are you understanding me? That's carrying what? A level of spiritual power. Because this thing, it will go. They don't, they don't care nothing about what you're wearing. Even the devil wear Prada. It will coexist with you. It will walk around right there with you. Come on, somebody. It will, it will, it, and people will sit and they'll say, something looks... a man and you got one. You getting it? And it's still existing with you. And nobody has the power to cast it out from you. So what begins to happen if God will have to raise a prophet. A, you know there's some things is, it is what it is. And some things, amen, is some things is just some things. But at the same token, most things that has afflicted you and affected you can be because something has entered you. A, either a demon of affliction or a demon of sickness, a demon of disease, a demon of disorder. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it's up to us now to discover what that is. And so what you do when you come in such an atmosphere like this, the person who's going to deliver you, they have, they can't take some demons unless they're not fenced with what? Fenced with what? Iron. 
We have to be friends with iron. That's why everybody going around, out, out, out. Yeah, you better watch out. You better not pout. <laughs> you have to be what? Friends with iron. Because some people are carrying multiple. <laughs> multiple. Multiple demons. Are you understanding me? Some people are carrying multiple problems. So the person who's coming to deliver you must be friends with iron. They must be connected to the covenant of God. A covenant keeper. Come on, somebody. They must, amen, be able to sustain, amen, a powerful prayer altar. So the first thing, we are carriers of the presence of God. No demon will move if I am not carrying the presence of God. Not one single demon will move. How do I know that I am carrying the presence of God? Because they are moving. They are going. They are leaving. They are terrified. Please. I have to hurry. So I am now a carrier of the presence of God. I spend time in God. I spend time with him. Come on, somebody. So I am in the presence. I carry the presence. I am painted with the fragrance. I carry a mantle. I, am I talking to you? I have a covenant relationship with God. I have an established altar. Yeah. Established altar. Hallelujah. I practice. My worship is so intense and so dedicated, not just when I come here, but also when I come here. Some of you don't want to worship. You don't want to praise. You don't want to bow down. To be able to move demons and powers. These are some prerequisites. I will give you the rest. Praise God in our 21 days of consecration and our training for it. But I'm just giving you a little tidbit now and then I'm done. I must be able to what? Practice my altar, my worship. I must be dedicated. I must have a consecrated life and a dedicated life. Are you people hearing me? It's no use to try to cast a demon out and there's no consecration. There's no fasting. There's no prayer. Are you understanding me? So I live a fasted life. I don't just fast. I live a consecrated life. Did you know that? Did you understand that? Last but by no means least. When I go to cast out your demons, I don't ask your demon. Are you ready? Do you feel like coming out today? How do you feel? Are you having morning sickness? Are you going to menopause? Are you having post-traumatic? No. Out. I command them out. Number two, I command them out. I destroy their altars. I confront the altar of the witch. But understand me, people, every time you destroy an altar, you better make sure that yours is established. For all of you wannabes all over the place you want to go, just make sure you have an altar, and your altar is backed by another altar, by a powerful altar. As I can tell you, them devils, they, they come and eat. <laughs> As I was saying, they will come back to test you, to try you. They want to make sure this woman, this man, can just cast the gates, break up my whole altar, and the weak. <laughs> Easy to break up my whole altar. You no longer take me to build this altar. <laughs> this is you. They don't want to lose you from their altar. I'm going to confront that altar. So things like witchcraft and all of these different things. People of God, you cannot just think you are going to just walk away like that. It's got to be a dedication. There's got to be a commitment to God. I have to hurry. I cancel everything connected to the altar. I destroy the spirit of witchcraft. I also know by intercession when I leave here, I cannot just leave here. I know that I have to pray. And I pray and I continue to pray all through the night. To do this is not an easy task. But they know your reputation already. So I have to continue to do it. This is not one type of thing where you are working for somebody and you retire. My commitment to God is for life. Amen. So when I say I'm coming to deliver you, I'm coming to deliver you. I destroy their altars. I confront those demons. I enforce my covenant relationship with God. That's the confidence that I have. Not one altar can be. And demons don't have the power to tell me no. 
because I'm not coming out. Get up, shut up, get out. Get out. I don't have time to play here. You're not cutting the movie. The devil is a liar. Out, get up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great little slow to listen for me. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Thank you. So these are, thank you. These are the way some of them function. Is a function in what is called clusters and groups. Thank you. They function in what is called clusters and groups. Notice they're different shapes, different colors, different sizes. But they, they bring themselves together and they form a whole cluster. Depending on how they feel, some days is how they sound. Some days they sound scratchy. Some days they sound grunting. Sometimes you go to castle and the people, they say, rrr, rrr, rrr. they manifest different ways. Some just burst quietly and go. Some don't be burst at all. They just leave. The ones that you see burst, sometimes when you see, they attach itself to organs. Why do people vomit, prophetess, in your delivering service? And in some people delivering services, they don't vomit. Well, it depends on sometimes the anointing that person is carrying. It doesn't make a person weak or strong. A person won't have time for you to vomit. He's just say, get out. A person. A person don't have time. He don't have time. Oh. A person say, go, I say. Get out. Go. Be moving on to the next person, you know. But sometimes, let me tell you one of the reasons why. And I'll tell you, I, I promise you, I'm not going to stay much longer. Time is going, and y'all want to sit down like y'all in one to one. Is yeah. <laughs> that, that depending on where that demon has lodged itself and how it entered you, may be some of the reasons why people vomit. Do you understand why you vomit? Amen. It's how it's entered you and where it entered you. For an example, and the type of demon that entered you, if this demon is from a witch altar or involves in witchcraft, I guarantee you they have bought some potion and they've given it to you. Either they've given it to you by way of syringe, whether you felt where somebody sticked something in you while you were sleeping, they put it in your food, they put it Amen. Even in your mouth while you're sleeping. They fed you while you're sleeping. They have um, injected things in you. Now, all you people who are acting like, I only talking to these few people right here, walking up and down, with your hip highs up in the air, and who are looking like you, ready for me to start shouting out. This information is going to be vitally important to you in 2024. I want you to know whatever you see happening in the natural is already happening in the spiritual. Yes. And let me help you with what that means. You notice that gun availability have gone up. Yes. More guns are being on the streets. Yes. More guns are being sold than anything else. Yes. What is that telling you in the spirit? Guns. Yes. People are buying guns. They want to shoot you, but they're not going to buy physical gun. Yes. These witches are not buying. These warlocks are not buying physical guns to shoot you. They are practicing their skills to shoot at you. Yes. Arrows, guns, pallets, everything. I don't get paid for nothing. <laughs> Not at all. I'm really joking. Listen to me now. Stay focused. Multiple. This is the way some of you look. Just like this on the inside. Like fibroids. Now, sis, Thomas, different types of demons, spirits, colorful, and turn it down a bit, sir. You've learned to tolerate some of them. You've learned to cohabitate with some of them. 
and you even see some of them in your children. You can see the ones within your brother and your sister more than you can see the ones within you. Because it's easier to see from outside rather than from inside out. But you know they're there. But a spirit called pride, arrogance, and offense works with you and causes you to cover them and to protect them. That is a demon's dream day that you have covered for them. When I say out, you say not yet. And you, you hold on to them. So what God is saying to you for do now, we must deliver you from them. Some of them, to get them out, you have to get the strong man out first. But not always the strong man comes to the top first. He pushes up all the little jimmies. And then you have to remember he's in there. But the Bible said you should first bind the strong man. So what is the strongest thing fighting you today? What is the strongest thing fighting you? What is the thing that is most a problem to you? Behind that strong man first and all the others will begin to go behind them. Now, why do people keep vomiting like this, spitting up like this, convulsing? Because there's something that was given to you. And when it was given to you, it lodged itself somewhere inside of you. So sometimes demons like to go and find an organ where it is safe. And for most women, it is in the midsection. Because there's plenty of things. There are plenty of fat to sorry, plenty of things to hide here. And so it goes there and it likes to lodge in that stomach. And different things you will know. Some people, they have migraines. You know that something is trying to shoot arrows there against the mind and life of that person. Some people in the back, they like to hide there because not many people will look to the back. So that's why some people have slipped this, some people have herniated this. Some people have, they may, you know, they fall. The first thing is injured is that area. Some people, the womb. Most women are suffering from cysts, fibroids, all manner of different things because the enemy wants to take over the womb from the lap. Amen. Amen. To the living you, give God a praise. Amen. Come on, give God a praise out there. I already know what you're carrying. And if I'm going to get it out of you, I need to have power and I need to have authority. I need to have power and authority. I already know I have it. But now you have to be the one believe it. That the person who's going to deliver you, they have the authority to deliver you. If not, you can stay coming back to the same deliverance. Which is what I'm trying to end on this day of the year, this last Saturday of the year. So when you come back again, you ain't coming back to Are you understanding? So, in order for you to be delivered, then the one who is going to deliver you must be carrying power. They must have the tools and the equipment and the spiritual ability that when you come, But you must know now, I am the one. This prophet or this man or this woman has the ability to deliver you. Amen. You know you're carrying something. Amen. You're not too sure what it is, but you know it is not of God. Amen. Something either entered you in your dreams or either entered you while you were sleeping or while you was in a relationship with that Delilah. Amen. Are you understanding me? Amen. With that person, whoever. And something from them was transferred to you or something came. I have the lineage of the bloodline of your ancestors. Your grandmother practiced. Your, gra your grandfather was a mason. Are you understand? Yes. Whatever they, they were and whatever they did, it opened the door. And these things came in. Or you opened the door. You began to do drugs. You began to drink. You began to... So these spirits came in. And the longer you keep them, the bigger they grow. They expand. They take over more territories. When they first came in, they only had one area. Stay right there. When they first came in, they only had what one area. But because you kept leaving them there and you only go into your friends who tolerating you, they grew and they expand their territory to all others like cancer. It starts in the breast, but then it moves to the chest. It takes over the lungs and all the other machines, all the other organs. Are you getting me? 
privates but also kill people with cancer. Because the place where they need to come for deliverance, their family say, don't you dare go there. Don't you dare go there. <laughs> what you going there for? Huh? And we praying for you. Hey, it's okay. Jesus bless you. I love you. Amen. But you must understand that there are certain people that carry certain powers. Because of by reason of their calling, their assignment, and the altar that God has given to them. I also learned something before I do this, is that I understand everybody is not going to come to this church. Again, some people pride will not allow them to come here. So you can share the link all you want. Keep on sharing though. I'm just telling you the truth. They didn't talk about this church so bad and about this God and this prophet and this apostle so bad. You think they come in here? Even if they're on their last... Tell... <laughs> and they're back. back. Pride. Get it out. They'll kill you. So I must have the power to do that. I must have the anointing, the ability to do it. I must have the authority to do it. I must have the command to do it. I must have the grace from God to do it. I must have the presence of God as long as the presence of God is with me. I can do all things through Christ's friend of me. No demons will fight with me, no one will wrestle. They attach themselves in your organ. In your organ. Once that organ is now dealt with, the demon begins to pour out. Some people vomit out. If it was depending, depending on the type of entrance it was, if it brought sickness, some people vomit out even with that. Are you getting me? I was delivering the lady the other day. She said her sister was also being delivered. Yeah. How does that happen, no prophetess? How? How? That is mysterious to you, eh? Come, I promise you in this year I will show you. But I'll tell you one thing. See, that person that is operating under the power of God is connected to the spirit of God. And in the spirit realm, we can also, by the power of the Holy Spirit, travel in the realms of the spirit. Not astral travel. Not any form of which, um, you know, of new age travel. By the Holy Spirit. Many of the prophets did it. And they were not witches and warlocks. Okay. So when that demon is exposed and he is commanded, I destroy that altar. Then all of a sudden, I already know. It has to. Are you okay? I already know he, he's, he has to come out. He's, you're not going to stay here long. Do you get what I'm saying? Because your time has come. Your day is over. Am I talking to somebody? You cannot keep tormenting this man like this. And I don't care what his father was. I don't care what his mother was. Your time has come to lose this man. To lose this woman. To lose this boy. To lose this girl. Somebody say, you have to lose me, devil. You have to come out. You have to go. In the name of Jesus. Even the way you say it. Even the way you say it. It's a problem to me. You have to go. <laughs> you have to go. You have to go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you have to go. Are you crazy? And then you want me to look ugly. You want me to look like, out. Go out. You want me to look ugly. <laughs> they want me to look ugly while they're looking like poker hunters. <laughs> you, by reason of your will, your desire. 
I have reason of you wanting to get that thing out of you so bad. Enough is enough. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Now you come to 2024. You have to say what? Out! Somebody say you gotta come out, devil. You gotta lose me, devil. You gotta let me go. You gotta let me go. You gotta let me go. You gotta let me go, devil. You gotta get out of my mind. You gotta get out of my thoughts. Hey, you gotta get out of my children. You ain't about to get my children. You ain't about to get my children. You ain't about to get my children's children or my grandchildren. Oh no, you might have tricked me before, devil. You might have tricked me. You might have. You might have caused my life to be a certain way, but you ain't gonna have my boys. Oh no. You ain't got my girls, oh, devil, 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 devil. This a different level. This a different level. That's strong. That one demon that always stays behind. That always stays behind and hides himself. Because he don't want nobody to believe that he is there. Ah. He don't mind if you go to church and you marching up and down and praying. He don't mind if you on the praise team jumping and amen, amen. He don't mind. He don't mind. He say, <laughs> You got me and I got you, bro. We got each other back. We got each other covered. He just stays right there. And he said, you know. <laughs> he said, nobody is gonna, nobody gonna bother you because you're minister. Who are you? Minister. Minister. <laughs> Praise God. So just hang with me, brother. And I hang with you. Nobody will even know you're there. They're not going to embarrass you in front of this whole church trying to cast nothing out of you. Come on, because you know. Hey, what, what can I say? We had your father. We had your grandfather. Uh, we killed your mother. Yeah. We after some of your nieces, your nephews. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to prove here about deliverance? <laughs> hey, the demon is talking just like that, you know. He's talking, he's talking loud and clear. And <laughs> you were supposed to be blessed, but <laughs> he just got your blessings on a little lockdown right now. You know, and, and don't, don't listen to this prophet and this apostle now. He's talking all this fake stuff and talking about next year going to be the year of the supernatural oil of favor and the glory, <laughs> the death for them, but you know, that ain't really for you, you know. It ain't really for you. It's in there for you. Because <sighs> it's just me and you. There's one thing left, the strong man. You loud and profit to get rid of everything else, but hold on to this one, this one. Don't put this one, hey, just said, don't put me on this paper, boy. Talking about no purge. Purge, you know what purge? You know what Purge did to all those other demons when she cast out last year? <sighs> Don't put me on this sheet. I just letting you know right now. You put me on this sheet, boy. You sit here. Oh, it's going to be me and you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the prophet right now. <laughs> <laughs> so watch what begin to happen. Is the demon masticates itself with you. Yeah. And it allows itself to coexist. Because it really wants to destroy you. It allowed those other ones to go. Because they were weak. Some of them, they were weak. They did not have the power to hold on. 
under that fire because why? You allowed it to be covered. You allowed it to be snuggled in. You allowed it to coexist with you. And you say, just as long as they don't see me and they don't call me out, I ain't coming out. And that's where a lot of people are. They feel as if they're super spiritual. They got the prayer cloth around them. They got on a turbine. They got all kinds of stuff on, but they ain't got no true power. They don't spend no quality time in prayer or in the word. And they only come, Jimmy, Jimmy, what you gonna give me? Apostle, what you got from up? Come on. They, they don't have no faith. They don't have no faith. Because they already know, the demon already know faith without works is dead. Some people got such a bad attitude. They got an attitude worse than a centipede. So the demon know he ain't moving. I only move when I see fire. And I see authority. And so what God got to do is bring the prophet back on you again. And say... In the name of Jesus Christ. Whose I am and who I serve. I destroy your kingdom in this man's life. I destroy your kingdom in this family. I destroy every wicked altar. And I break every demonic covenant. The ones that are known and unknown. Seen and unseen. Every occultic power. Everything that would have entered this family. Entered your family. Entered your life. Praise God. I don't care who you taught. What you taught about your mother and your grandmother. If there was an altar raised. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I'm burning by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because I don't just want to cast this demon out of you. I want to be able to put an anointing in you. I want you in 2024 to walk in power. I want you in 2024 to walk in wealth. In 2024, I want you to be anointed, appointed, and I want you to prosper. So every demon spirit that got itself wrapped around your life and around your family and around your children in the name of Jesus. Huh? So this is what the prophet got to do. The prophet got to command that demon to go out. 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 Now that one, that ain't acting right there. Whatever was on the inside of you. God said, I came to cast it out. I came to get rid of it. I came to destroy it. I came to break it. I came to loose you from it. In the name of Jesus, whatever residue is left in you today, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the word of God, all over this building, I command that evil spirit, that wicked spirit, that spirit of witchcraft, I destroy every wicked altar. I destroy it. If witchcraft on that paper, hold that paper up and wave that paper and say, you spirit of witchcraft, ancestral witchcraft, household witchcraft, in the name of Jesus, Zatarapa Sata, come out, come out, come out. Ah, lose your power, lose your power, lose your power, lose your power, lose your power. Everything that's on that paper. Everything that's on that paper. Everything that's on that paper. Household witchcraft. Witchcraft in the family. Witchcraft in the family. Go in the name of Jesus. Loose me. Ancestral witchcraft. Bloodline witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Witchcraft from my father's house. Witchcraft from my mother's house. However you entered, get out. Get out. I purge you out. I purge you out. I purge you out. I purge you out. 
It's happening, it's happening. All over this building. I purge you out. I purge you out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. I say get out of me. Get out of me. I purge you out. Get out of my mind. 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 Get out. Get out of my soul. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this everywhere. Look at this everywhere. Ah. 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 Come on. Everything out, everything out. Forget about those papers. Forget about their paper. They'll give it to you afterwards if it drop. Come on, somebody, cash it out. I purge you out. I purge you out. I purge you out. Somebody help me, I purge you out. In the name of Jesus, you unclean spirit. You unclean spirit, you wicked spirit, you spirit of witchcraft, attacking my life. You spirit of witchcraft, attacking my life. In the name of Jesus, watch out, put it down. Everywhere, receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Jababa. Don't stop! Drag your devil out! What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It must come out! It must lose you! It must release you! That demon! Ushers! 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 Quickly everywhere! That I deliver you. I deliver you. That's a baba 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 sata. That's a baba 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 sata. As people are manifesting, if they are standing next to you, help them to the ground. Help them to the ground. They will not injure themselves. Help them to the ground. Help put down. Help put down. Help put down. Put them to the ground. As they're manifesting, just help them to the ground. Zata, turn them over. Turn them over. Turn them over. Turn them over. Everything that's attacking you, every spirit of witchcraft that's trying to destroy you, in the name of Jesus, I destroy it. I destroy it. I destroy it. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Your time has come. 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 Your time of deliverance has come. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Loose the people. Set them free. Fire. 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 Let Holy Ghost deliver you. Let Holy Ghost deliver you. Don't let pride get in your way. Don't let people stop you. Don't let people stop you. Don't let people stop you. Don't let pride get in the way. Don't let people stop you. Take all glasses and put them on one of these speakers because you're not going to stay there with that one woman all day. Zakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakarabakar
Come on. As you're on that ground, Holy Ghost is delivering you. Holy Ghost is delivering you. Come on, if you're spinning or vomiting, if something is coming out of you, reach for tissue, reach for a cup. If something is coming out, if something is coming out, in the name of Jesus, in 2024, as we on the threshold, it must vomit out of you. Every poison, every poison in your body must vomit out. I say every poison in your body, every toxin in your body, vomit out, vomit out, vomit out, vomit out, spit out, spit out, spit out. I approach you. I approach you. I approach you. I approach you. Every demon attacking your life, attacking your family, it cannot stay. Fire. Watch out. I'm releasing. Put them down. There will be no injury. There will be no injury. There will be no injury to yourself. Holy Ghost. Angels of the Lord. Angels of the Lord. Raphael. 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 Salalabai. Angel. Raphael. Healing. Deliverance. Zapratanaba Zabai. Zapratanabara. Raphael, angel of healing, healing in your wings. Zatada Baba, Zatada Barana, Zatada Dede, Zatada Dada. Everything on the inside of me that's not of God. Everything that's in my life that's not of God. However you enter. However you enter, you must leave. However you enter, you must come out. Put your hands on your stomach. Everything in my body, everything in my body, that's not of God. You demon, you demon, you sickness, you disease, you sickness, you disease, you sickness, you disease. I command you, in the name of Jesus, as of right now, you have no place. Oh. 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 I release the angel of the Lord. Watch them, watch them. All the way in the back. Over here. Zata, Zalaba, Laba, Laba. Lose your powers. Lose your powers. Lose your powers. Say, lose your powers from me. Lose your powers from me. You unclean spirit. You evil spirit. Get out of my life. You are not crossing over with me. You will not exist with me in 2024. There's no space for you. There's no room for you. All of you. All of you. Get out of me. All of you. Get out of me. All of you. Get out of me. All of you. Get out. Witchcraft. Somebody's being delivered right now. That spirit of witchcraft. That spirit of witchcraft. That keep attacking you. Keep attacking your life. That spirit is not supposed to be with you. That spirit is not yours. 
you have been affected by the spirit for too long. Your mother was affected. Am I talking to you? Your children is affected. This is the reason why you've not been able to prosper. This is the reason why you have not been able to excel. Whether the arrow came from a witch altar that was intended for you or intended for somebody else near to you, it has affected you. So I commanded to go out in the name of Jesus. I commanded to go out in the name of Jesus. I commanded to loose you. Every wicked power. Boom. Loose her. In the name of Jesus. Loose her. Loose her. Come out of this woman. The Lord rebuke you today. Every accident that keep happening to you. Every accident. The enemy wanting to affect you and destroy you. Yes. I injure you. The devil is a liar. I want to cast it out right now. I want to cast it out. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of accident, of incident, of trauma, of bad luck. Shut up. Go. Witchcraft. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Leave. Say. Leave. Leave. Go out of me. Go out in Jesus' name. Say, go out of me. Go out of me. Say, you found spirit. spirit of witchcraft. Of witchcraft. Of witchcraft. Every, curse. Every curse. Out. Out. Look at that. Watch it. Tell it not to swallow. Spit out. Spit out. Spit out. Spit out. These are arrows shot. Some arrows are shot while you are sleeping. Some demons wait until you go to sleep. And you are going to bed now. They know you are not fully conscious. So they come. And they enter. That's why your dreams are so messed up. That's why your thoughts are so messed up. Look at what's coming out of these people. And you're thinking the doctor just say, Ah, it's just your finger. It's just your finger. It's just your heart. It's just your leg. It's just your toe. It's just a fracture. Oh, stay right there hopping around. I've seen people with fracture for three years somebody say impossible oh you stay right there because why a demon has done this it's nothing nah it's nothing natural i see people that was normal begin to walk and drag around one of their legs and they're not 89 years old come on somebody somebody say not normal not normal they're trying to keep it together but there's something happening because something has ended. You can listen. I don't care if your name is Usher today. I don't care if your name is Praise God, Amen, Praise God, Pastor, Elder. I don't care. You had better get to deliver this last Saturday. When I cast the demon out, I cast your sickness out. So, if you came walking with crutches, you will walk out that crutches today. Oh, if you came walking in wheelchair, uh, rolling in wheelchair, walk out that wheelchair today. Hallelujah. I don't care what your problem was. If you're wearing a back brace, you will lose that back brace. You will take that corset off. Because you will discover the pastor, that your pastor is a deliverer. And your Jesus honors our word to perform it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Zaya Zaya Rarataba, Zapu Zaprataba, Zaprataba Sada. So wherever you are, say in the name of Jesus. Every team and power affecting my life, affecting my family, affecting my purpose. Affecting my destiny. You will not stay here. You will not stay here. So you spread the pride. You spread the pride. You spread the arrogance. I rebuke you. I rebuke all of you. Every part of you. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I bind you. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I purge you out. I purge you out. I purge you out. Get out of me. Get out of me! Get out of me! Lose your powers! Lose your powers! Come out of me! 
in the name of Jesus. You are clean spirit. You evil spirit. In the name of Jesus. Tell her she is free and she's healed. She's healed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to do something you never do. You are free, you are healed. That leg is healed. I say your leg is healed. In Jesus Christ's name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil has given to you is not of God. That tumor must die. That tumor must die. In the name of Jesus. All of you that have a tumor in your body, a tumor in your prayers, a tumor in your chairs, a tumor wherever it is, that tumor must die. That tumor must die. It must go out. That problem with your stomach. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lose your powers. Go out of her. Lose your power. So, if you're the one working with the person, you take their glasses, Katandu, you give it to your next agent. So that after the service, we don't have to go to Gucci to buy people frames back. The devil is a liar. And it was Fuji because you broke it now it's Gucci. Come out. Come out. Walk with power. Come out. Leave the woman. Leave the woman. Come here. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break your powers. I break your powers. Who are you? Announce yourself quickly. Announce yourself. Who are you? Why you attack this woman like this, you demon? Huh? Why you attack this woman like this? Your business. My business. It mind is. Your business. I watch me now as I mind my business. business. Watch me as I mind my business. business. Please allow me to mind my business. business. Yes, watch me. Yes. Watch me. Mind your business. Watch. Yes. Fire! Oh, the Holy Ghost. Fire, fire your back. No, come here. Come yeah, here. Fire, fire. No, don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Look now. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I move. I destroy your altar. <laughs> come here. Come here. Look. It's my you. In the name of Jesus. I break your power. Jesus name. He didn't fight for himself. For he is weak, I weaken your fortress. I strip you of your armor. He said to the in the name of Jesus Christ. I strip you of your armor. And I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this woman go. According to the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Witchcraft, I destroy your altars. I destroy all of them. I remove this woman's name from your altars. I take her life from your altars. I break all your curses by the blood of Jesus. Now go out. Go out. Go out. Every spirit that came to hurt this woman, every spirit that brought pain to this girl, I enter the cavity of the soul. I deliver from hurt. I deliver from hurt. Hurt. Hurt, pain, anger, hurt, pain, Jesus rejection. Christ. Jesus, go out. go out. Go out. In the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Everywhere it is in the girl. Fire. Go out. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. Let her go. You can't have her. The blood of Jesus. Go out! Go out! I 
kill every serpent in the body. I kill every serpent in that body. In the name of Jesus. Go out the girl. Torment. Lose her. Lose her mind. Lose her mind. Torment. Frustration. Frustration. Lose her thoughts. Go out. Abuse of every kind. Abuse of every kind. Abuse of every kind. In the name of Jesus. Every abuse. Go out. You demons. Remember I told you there are multiple demons. So let's just put them all there together. And tie them up by the rope of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. I tie them all together. In the name of they will hear my voice. They shall obey my voice. They shall obey my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's name. Leave out now. Witchcraft, I destroy your powers in this body. The snakes uh, wrap around this woman. I chop all of you up. Die in Jesus' name. I chop all of you. I remove your head. I remove your powers. Spirit husband. Spirit husband. Look. I destroy your covenant. I destroy your covenant. You will not have the girl no more. You did enough damage. No! I said no. Listen to me. Now maybe this demon was not listening earlier. So it wasn't hearing clear earlier. That you can imagine a demon feeling I can have power to tell Jesus, no, I am not listening. I am not going out. Can you imagine such a scenario? It don't happen. The demon doesn't have any power. It doesn't matter if it's a witchcraft spirit, a voodoo spirit. It don't, it don't have no power in this realm. So, now, I destroy the kingdom of this evil spirit. I destroy your powers. The girl deserved to be free. <sighs> be loose, mommy. Be loose. Be delivered. Witchcraft, go out. I cast you out. I cast all of you out. Witchcraft. I cast you out. Go out. Leave. Go out. Every door they have opened in that family. There are some of you that have opened doors. In your family, doors are open. Some of you have opened doors in your own life. And the doors you've opened because you consulted with psychics and witches and warlocks. You went and you went to get your palm read. You went for them to tell you something. You paid money. That's you? Okay. Wave your hands. Don't waste my time. This prophet ain't playing today. I don't care if you went 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 80 years ago. I don't care if somebody took you and you may not know, may not know. He may not know, may not know he was a witch. Hmm. <laughs> My God! Jesus! Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for setting the free. My God! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> The unquenchable fire, quenchable fire, fire of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Be free. Listen. Who the sun sets free has to be free indeed. Has to be free indeed. One of the things the Bible said, purge yourself of dead works. Purge yourself of what? Dead works. The unfruitful works of darkness. So why is he telling you to purge yourself of the unfruitful works of darkness? It's because some of you went after some works and it is unfruitful. It's not profiting you nothing. In order for you to be delivered, you need to purge yourself of it. In other words, be delivered from it. So you cannot go to the house of darkness. I'm calling out witchcraft, 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 witchcraft. Amen. So, but you, you don't think you went to a witch. You just think you went to somebody to consult 
to read something for you, to fix something for you, hey, it's called witchcraft. And if he said, purge yourself of that works, don't waste my time, I promise you. We'll cast the devils out until tomorrow. They'll be right back tomorrow, even on a Sunday. Because you are covering him. I showed you the last one. You cover for him. You say, hey, I, you know, I don't want to look some kind of way. There's some of you, you are practicing witch. Some of you, you are practicing witchcraft. Oh, Jesus Christ. You are practicing witch. Do you know what that means? You yourself was dealing with tarot cards. You yourself was dealing with all of these powers. You have crystals. Some of you have things right now in your bags that are called good luck charms. Hurry up, take them out. Hurry up. Some of you have things in your bag you got from witches. You ordered stuff online. You went to Amazon. This ain't just witch houses no more. Some of you went on Amazon, on eBay, on different sites. And you order things that it said it will bring good luck to you. You order things. You wear a necklace with idols and shrines on it. I'm going to count to ten. I want to count to ten. Go find your bag. Take your necklace off. Take whatever you have in your possession that you know is not of God. And you know it's going to hinder you. You know it's going to block you. Get rid of it. Get it out of you. Get it off of you. Zabaka, somebody say, Prophet, is there things that I did and I didn't know any better? God is not going to condemn you. And even if you knew better and you did it, this is purge. This is purge. Am I talking to somebody today? You want me to lay hands on you? You want me to deliver you? Praise God. What part are you playing in this deliverance? Somebody said, I need to be totally delivered. Totally delivered. Totally set free. So that the thing can stop rising up in you. So that it can stop doing what? Rising up in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that it can stop coming to you. So that the dead can stop coming to you. So that witches can stop astral projecting to you. There's a homing device. Do you know what a homing device is? A homing device is a, 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 a apparatus. A tracking mechanism. That they will sometimes put in a car or in the clothes or anywhere. So that people can be able to find you no matter where you go. It's called a monitoring spirit. Are you people hearing me? Yeah. But what the monitoring spirit does, it is found something to, to, it is have something that is attached to you to keep following you. And that's why no matter where you go, no matter what you try, you try to do, it's like, <laughs> what is this? What is this devil? Today I came to deliver you from that spirit. Yeah. Every one of you that have been monitored by witches, by monitored by people, by birds watching you. This certain bird always flying. Everywhere you go, you see the same bird. I didn't say the same kind of bird. The same bird. Am I talking to somebody? Cats, animals, owls. Are you understanding me? Dogs, whatever it is. Whatever they set up cameras to watch and monitor you. May that device be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That monitoring spirit, I gouge out your eye. I gouge out your eye. I blind you in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break your powers. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. When you pray these prayers, you have to mean the prayers you are praying. I said, when you pray these prayers, you have to mean the prayers you are praying. Zakaraka nabakara bakara de dos kenene bo satana. Don't just say words. Words with no power is worthless. When I pray and I command the demon to go out, I am saying that with authority and power. No, it don't have to be screaming loud all the way down to China. But my God, at least let it reach Brazil. A, B. Are we agreeing today? How many of you agree there's something that needs to come out of you? There's something that needs to leave your life. Something that's not supposed to be there. Something in your family that's not supposed to be there. Something that's tormenting you not supposed to be there. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we purge out that old leaven. We purge out that old thing. That bad habit, that addiction, everything. 
that wicked power, that witchcraft. Now, just in case the demons think that I forgot what I was saying, there are some of you that have things in your house. I'm going to deal with this this week again. But some of you have things in your house, apparatus in your house, things in your china, things you call china, that you call artifacts, things you call art, things you call charm. Are you understand sculptures? Things that you glory in. Some of these things was handed down from your, from your ancestors. Some of these things was come all the way down from your great, great, great grandmother. And you are now trying to hold on to these things for good luck. So that you can too move and They want you to move in the power. They want to initiate you. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Hold that woman up. Watch this. So I sever the tie. Say this prayer. I sever every tie. To every ancestral prayer. To every ancestral spirit. In the name of Jesus. I sever the ties. That bind me. To the altars. Of my ancestors. Of my forefathers. And my foremothers. Every charm. Every charm. That connects me. To their altar. And their wicked legacy. Every charm. That connects me. To their wicked altars. And their legacy. Of witchcraft, of Obea, of voodoo, of magic, of Santeria, in the name of Jesus, every charm, every power, every idol, every fixture, everything that connects me to the altars of my ancestors, to their false powers, to their works of evil, to their works of darkness, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Watch out! Watch out! Be the name of Rasa! Watch out! This will be disconnected! I disconnect you! I disconnect you! I disconnect you! I disconnect you from the altar! I disconnect you from the altar! I disconnect you from the wicked altar! Everywhere you are! I disconnect you! from their wicked altars in the name of Jesus wherever you are around the world wherever you are under the song of my voice be disconnected be disconnected watch that woman be disconnected be loose be loose be loose be loose be loose in the name of Jesus, everything in your life, 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 in the name of Jesus, be disconnected from household witchcraft, household witchcraft, ancestral witchcraft, everywhere they have attacked you. Even in the job, in the job. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire. Watch them. Put them down. And the power of the Holy Spirit. Pilos. Watch out for your sister! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Fire the Holy Ghost! Fire the Holy Ghost! In the name of Jesus! Come out! Be delivered! Be delivered! By the pump, watch out! Watch out for your sister! Be loose! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Get out! Get out! Lose them! Go out from them! Go out! Watch out! Please watch them! By the power of the Holy Ghost, it shall not torment you anymore. That witchcraft, that spirit of darkness that came from the waters, that came from the grave, by the blood, let this water represent the Holy Ghost. Let it represent the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Ghost. Wow. 
Turn them over in the name of Jesus. Every sickness must leave your body. Every sickness. Watch them pull it down. Every sickness must go. Every disease must go. Every demon attacking your mind. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I cast it out. In the name of Jesus. Go out by the fire of the blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus was wounded for you. Jesus was bruised for you. In the name of Jesus. Blood and water. Watch out, put it down. Blood and water came out of his side. In the name of Jesus. Blood and water came out of his side. Zatanaba. 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 Blood and water came out of his side. In the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. Be healed. By the blood. Be delivered. Be set free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be set free. In the name of Jesus. Ratanaba. 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 In the name of Jesus. Be loose. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God is upon you. Jesus. I break the curse from you. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Ratanaha. I lose these people from demonic powers, from rivers and seas, wherever their names were carried. In the name of Jesus. From the house of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let them be delivered. Let them be free. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Zala. Be free. I break you free Jesus. from every marine spirit. Jesus from every powers of wickedness. Jesus working against your life. Jesus in the name of witchcraft. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. 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 I cast you out. I cast you out by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the word of God, who the Son sets free. Be free indeed. Be free. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and deliver you. Set up from all your trouble. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the word of God, in the name of Jesus, he was wounded for your transgression, he was bruised for your iniquity, the disciple of his peace was upon you, and by the stripes of Jesus, you are here, the crimson blood, it never loses their power. It never loses power. It never loses power. It never loses power. I break you. Come out of her. Go out. Loose. Loose. I set you free, Yama. I set you free, Mama. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I cast every evil spirit out. Set all of you free, 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 free to live, free to live, Mama. No more bondage, no more bondage. Power of the Holy Ghost, fire, fire of the Lord. No more bondage. You shall cross over with power, cross over this Jordan, cross over this Jordan. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire, 
You shall cross over this joy. You serpent, you serpent. Let her go. me free. Say thank you Jesus for delivering me. By your stripes I am delivered. I am set free. You perverse spirit. You perverse spirit. You unclean spirit. Go out of my life. You don't belong to me. Jesus belongs to me. Unquenchable fire, yeah, yeah. Holy Ghost is a fire. Jesus, under no other name, under no other name, 
Charms out. Oh, take crazy out. Take insanity out. Go out. Go out. Yes, go out. You hate her? Who are you that hate this girl like this? Huh? You hate her so bad. Uh huh. You don't like her. Who are you that don't like her? Huh? Who are you that don't like her? Huh? Huh? Okay. So that means your time is no more. Okay. Remove your powers and go. Jesus. Leave. Leave. Remove your powers and go. You snake. I kill you in the body. <laughs> Let the girl be free. Let the girl be free. In the name of Jesus. Tell us she's free in the name of Jesus. By the power of Jesus Christ. Whatever is tormenting you shall torment you no more. Whatever is fighting you will fight you no more. Whatever is fighting your children shall fight them no more. Take her up. Take up in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Every curse be removed from this family. In the name of Jesus. Every Christ be removed. You're free, young man. You're free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who is suffering from blindness in the family? Something wrong with the eye. Huh? You? Huh? It's you. What's wrong with your eyes? Uh, I lost my sight uh, years ago. Years ago. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the one that heal. You are the Hallelujah. one. Yes. You are the one. Hallelujah. Let every curse. Are you with him? Your husband. Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every Hallelujah. curse be removed from this whole family. This is not their portion. Hallelujah. This does not belong to them. In the name of Jesus. This does not belong to them. In the name of Jesus. This does not belong to them. Now you evil spirit, go from this family. Go now. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said they brought unto him those that were blind, deaf, lame, sick with all manner of disease. And according to the word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 10, and even in chapter 8, he says, he healed them all. Jesus so Father God, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. let every blind eye be open. Be open. Let every deaf ear be open. Jesus. Let every lame rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. I break every curse, uh, every spirit of disease, uh, including diabetes, uh, sugar. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. In the name of Jesus, uh, let your story change. Uh, let greatness come out of this life uh, for the glory of God. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, 
I set you free, sir. God hand is upon you. Let him touch you. Let him lose you. Your struggle is over. Your days of failure Your days of failure no more. I declare in the name of Jesus. You shall run through a troop. You shall leap over walls. find you no more but that the spirit of the highest shall overshadow you and that God will give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ that these dreams will find you no more there's so many of you you're being attacked in your dreams you're being attacked in your dreams where are you? you're being attacked in your dreams that's a lot of you lift those hands up right now in the name of Jesus this is where most of your attack is coming because these demons, from whether they come from the grave, whether they come from the astral realm, whether they come from the waters or the marine kingdom, they come because they know while you are in a subconscious realm, you're not dead and you're not awake. You're asleep, correct? So they come to enter the dream. These come to bring nightmares. They come to bring all manner of things to you. They will even bring to you, praise God, lies and deception. They will try to give you the wrong job, give you the wrong spouse. Are you hearing me? Some of these marine spirits have children. You have children. They have children with you. And their children is in that invisible realm. This is some of you why you cannot even have children in the natural. This is why you have PCOS. This is why some of you can never marry. And if you do get married, the marriage is over. Somebody say, the devil is a liar. Yeah. You devil. You demons, demons. coming to me in my dreams, dreams. you perverse spirits, you You spirits of torment, torment. coming to attack me, coming to torment me, me. put the hands on your head right now, I will do to him and it will be for you, I open the ramp of the dream, Jesus, Jesus. You evil spirit entering the dreams of the people. So, so I, I draw a line here. What I did, I open the dream ramp. And wherever that evil spirit is coming from in the dreams, in the night, in the imagination, in the thought, I go there. I go there. I go there. Please watch these people carefully. Watch them. Please keep them safe. Some of them are falling already. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Come out. Come out. I move you out. I move you out. I move you out. I move you out of the dream. I move you out. You unclean spirit. I move you out. Come out. Out of Jesus' name. Out of Jesus' name. Out of Jesus' name. Say, go out. Out. Come out of my dreams. Out in the name of Jesus. Come out of my thoughts. Out, out of my you thoughts. You nasty spirit. You nasty spirit. Leave and go. Leave and go. Come no more. You spirit spouse. Spirit spouse. You spirit spouse. Yeah, spouse. This is not your house. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Jesus. Jesus. Leave. Jesus name. Go and come no more. Jesus name. You don't just send these demons back to their kingdom. Hallelujah. You command them to say, Judgment of God be upon you. Judgment of God be upon you. Come no more to my dreams. Come no more. You filthy spirit. You unclean spirit. You, per you perverse spirit. You masturbation. You masturbation. You masturbation. You inordinate affection. Go now. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. 
your purpose. I lose your purpose. I lose your destiny. Jesus. I call you to freedom. Jesus. I call you to liberty. Jesus. Everywhere you are today, that spirit is not yours. If you're carrying it back with you, then you are a fool. It don't belong to you. Half of the things that happen in your life, it starts in that realm, invisible realm. It starts in the realm of the dreams. In fact, most of you see it before. Before you see it, you see it before yes. you see it yes. let your back be healed yes. let your leg be healed in the name of Jesus Christ let your leg be healed get out get out Jesus, go find the Holy Ghost. Your reign is over. I say your reign is over. You powers from the waters. You powers from the grave. You ancestral spirit. I go to the water surrounding the land of Upwood. I go to Guyana. There's a family from Guyana. Just go from them. I'm too strong. I'm too strong. Just go out from them. You witch doctor. I kill you in the realm of the spirit. May the judgment of God be upon you. Every person who is fighting against you, that's a witch, a warlock, a sagoma. I, I declare they cannot fight Jesus. I cannot, I declare they cannot fight Jesus and win. They cannot fight Jesus. They might have fight you, but they will not be able to fight Jesus in 2024. So, you spirit of witchcraft, I command you, hear my voice. Leave the girl now. Go out now. Go out. Go out now. Go out. Go out. Take your powers out, I say. I'm not fighting with you. I put the judgment of God upon you now. I do something to you. I electrocute you. Go. And come no more. In the name of Jesus. Put her on the back. I take the pens and needles out the back. Take this out. I take the pens and needles out the leg. Straighten on the back. Move this cloud out my way. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Brateli do Sata. I don't know. But whatever was wrong with this leg and this back. I just heard the Lord said I must pray for her back. Pray for her leg. In the name of Jesus. Whatever arrow was shot against her. I break the powers of it. In the name of Jesus. Let this body be healed. Let it be healed. Let it be healed. Let it be healed. Totally healed. In the name of Jesus. No more paralysis. No more dilemma. I cast out every devil of affliction. I set you free. Witchcraft, go. Come no more. Wake up. You're fixed in Jesus' name. You're free. Tell her the same thing. You'll not be. Check your leg, check your back. It's healed. Check it out. Check it out. Somebody give God 
God praise. Hallelujah. Words I lift up, yokes of four. to take possession or to take siege of it. So that's why some of you feel dizzy some days. Some days you feel crazy. Some days you feel lazy. The type of demon it is, it enters you, it takes on, and it gives you its characteristics sometime. You're lazy? No. You're crazy? No. You were born sick? No. It makes you that way. Am I correct? Yes. That demon that enter your dreams. Most times they enter the dream. The arena of the dreams, the imagination, the thoughts. These are the arenas they work with. If they can take over the mind, they will take over the whole soul, the will. That's why people get sick and they say, ah, I'm dying. That's the first word come out of their mouth. That's why they get cancer. They get different sickness. And people take them for meditation more than they take them for prayer. They take them for healthy eating more than they take them for deliverance. Hey, you are crazy. Stay focused. Read <laughs> something. In that place where you carry them, if there's no profit in that place to deliver that person, start writing your obituary. Because the demon will eat all that healthy food. Mm. <laughs> Carrot. Mm. Asparagus. Eat all up. And you pay all that money for the demon to eat all the healthy food. And a healthy demon. A healthy demon. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's finished, he say, listen, he say, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Child, watch out the big one coming. Stand back, hold your wigs on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the healthy, the healthy ones that smell the worst. <laughs> yeah. And listen, because that demon trick people into believing. Now, I'm not saying that you should not change your eating habits. 
thank God, but you, you now 75, you've been eating like that all your life. You've been yeah. crazy. Yeah, Two weeks of eating healthy is going to change this devil mind. <laughs> you better think again. Don't work like that. God has to perform a miracle. That's why 2024, this year of 2024, has to be the year of engaging the supernatural. Yes. Are you understanding? Yes. Of what engaging the supernatural. And by the time we reach tomorrow to this oil of favor, Holy Ghost, <laughs> praise Jesus. I believe to be painted Ooh. with a fragrance that will attract the presence of God to you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It will be painted on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people are already beginning to experience it. The reason of the grace of this altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I cast out every last one of your demons. Everything that was fighting with you. Why were you, you? Why were you trying to beat me up? Huh? All one million of these people saw you swing at me. Did you all not see her swing at me? Yes, prophetess. And she fire her foot up and she swing again and she come at me like she was coming to punch me all. Yes, I saw it with my own four yes. eyes. Yes. Come, mommy, stand up. Stand up. Was that her? No. Would this woman do a thing like that to her prophet? No. no. It was a spirit. Now, you can go and watch your video when you're finished. But let me tell you, that demon, that will never attack you like this again. Amen. Jesus' name. I've been praying. I've been praying. This is okay, mommy. This is for you. I've been praying. I've been fasting. This is for you. I have been. I've been praying since August. What is it? It's a seed? It's for me. For you. Don't open it yet. Suppose it is a bomb. Eyes only. <laughs> I don't want to get blown by myself, you know. <laughs> You're going with me? <laughs> San Antonio, Texas, say we are going with you wherever you are going. <laughs> Listen. See, God loves his people so much. He loves his children so much. Yes. I don't know if she has something for me. I, I have no idea. So I'm ready to deliver you for you to give me something or whatever. But because you love me, you have given to me many gifts. Amen. And I want to say publicly thank you and thank all of you. Amen. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, because you don't have to do it. Do you understand? See, the gospel is free. My God. So now God has heard your prayer today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, my God. I bless it in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus name. And so listen to me, people. And thanks again, everyone. Some of you have been given apostle seeds for me because some days I don't even call out for the prophetic seed. And people will still go after the service and give it to the armor bearers or you'll slip it to the, and you say, please give this to prophets. I have all your cards. I have all your seeds. Yes. And some of you, <laughs> are your checks, you know, I have them. I have them. It, it, I didn't even realize that some people checks are expired. Oh Lord. I say, oh Jesus. I had it on my altar, so I was closing the altar for this year. And so if this if you're one of those people, please uh, pardon us. Pardon me. Because I put some things on the altar. And you know, it's not that I, I don't appreciate your seed or your gift, but I I'm believing God to do something in your lives. Hallelujah. This year. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I believe in God to do exceedingly abundantly and above oh, no, no, no. all that you can ask or think or imagine. And so, thank you, those of you that gave in the life of the prophet. May you receive the reward of prophets, and even this prophet, may you receive the rewards that God, some of the rewards that God has for me, may it come to your life, may it come to your family. He said, even if you give a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, may you receive a righteous man reward. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So I cover you in the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus name. I cover you in the grace of God. Jesus name. Let a new day begin now. Okay. New day begin. Let your delay be over. No more delay. No more Julia. No more rejection. God praise. tomorrow. Okay? I want to pray for him tomorrow. Who's he with? Who are you with, boy? Your mom? That's your son? Your grandson? I prayed for him before. I want to put a while on that boy tomorrow. Oh, in the Bahamas. You from the Bahamas or you just was in the Bahamas? He was in the Bahamas. And I prayed for him. The hand of God is upon this child. I just have to tell you. Amen. I want to put that oil on favor on him tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, Prophetess. Thank you, Mom. I can feel you love on me. It's all on the house. Love on me. 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 I can feel your love.
God loves you today. Hallelujah. God loves you with all your heart. Yes, he does. With all your soul. Yes. With all your might. Yes. With all your strength. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves you today. Amen. And guess what? No matter what you've been through in this year and this day, in last year, the year before, a new day has dawned. A new day has come. A new day has come. Receive it. Somebody say a new day. A new day. I receive it in Jesus. A new day of favor. A new day of favor. A new day of favor. Somebody said I receive it. I receive it. Jesus name. A new day of favor. Supernatural favor. Supernatural glory. Supernatural favor. Supernatural glory. Year of favor. Year of glory. Year of supernatural. Year of angels. Year of open door. Receive it. Receive it. Jesus name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, this year, this year. of 2024, 2024, I go to open door. I go to open door. Doors of favor. Doors of favor. Doors of blessing. Doors of increase. Doors of the anointing. Doors of power. Doors of blessing. Doors of breakthrough. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
crossing over with power. We're crossing over with the anointing. Hallelujah. We're crossing over with Jesus. Yeah. Are you now, ready? I'll tell you one thing. Hallelujah. If you stay around young people, you stay young. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the crossover? Are you ready for the crossover? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for the crossover. Listen, we got Apostle and I got all our gear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We even got some gear left over from last year. Oh, yeah. Praise God. But why are we crossing over with a celebration and things blinging and blinking? Blink, blink. Because this is going to be the year of supernatural favor. Come on. And glory. Yeah. The season of the oil is over. The day of the new has come. And God is going to change your status. He's going to change your image. Your outlook. People that think they got you in a box. And you people ahead of me. I sound far away. Amen. God is going to change your status. Hallelujah. He's going to change you. Your vision. You want it? Come. Amen. There you go. It's this. This. Go. Hallelujah. You do understand prophetic things. Let your eyes see things different now. Yeah. Let your eyes see things different. Hallelujah. See some, see some light instead of darkness. That's it. See some light. <laughs> light it up. <laughs> instead of darkness. Yeah, we all got to get ready. They're in the bookstore as long as they last. I ain't know how much but go in the bookstore. Yeah, but don't go yet. Let me not, close. Not, not, not yet? <laughs> you you have been us? I am. Oh, okay. I just want to say, Apostle, uh -huh. all of you that are here today, watch God. Watch God do the exceedingly abundantly above all. I want to say something. Praise God, the water that you carry with you today, please bring it tomorrow again. I use my water today as a demonstration just to show you what God can do. The Holy Ghost, now, I want to bring this clear because there are some, I am told, that there are some evil Pharisees out there in the name of Christianity that are on a pathway to destroy every man or woman of God except those people that are playing and singing their same music. And so no matter what we do, there was a season when people when we were working miracles and signs and wonders, and we still are, they attacked all prophets who was working miracles, signs, and wonders, who was moving in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then after they finished attacking all, all prophets, who was miracles, signs, and wonders, then they came after us who was casting out demons. Hey. And they say, these people are casting out demons by water spirits, <laughs> by spirits from the astral, spiritual I just want to say this, Apostle, and I'm done. I know, I just, I just, I don't, I just want to know what I want to say to them. Yeah. <laughs> tell me when you that I will tell you right now. I'm decreasing as we speak. Uh -huh. I am decreasing so that you can increase. Listen to me. They are their father, the devil. Amen. Because nobody that is of God is going to fight God and at what he is called a do, servant do. to do. Amen. I want you to know today I prayed with the water today. I prayed with the water yesterday. I prayed with the water last year. I use the water as a point of contact. Yes. And I will use the water next year. Yes. And the year after. Yes. And the year after the year after. Hallelujah. And because God. Yeah. Is the I'm, greatest power. So. <laughs> we so, will never. So. Apostle, never be defeated. Apostle. The keyboard player taking long again. Yeah. So, Apostle and people, listen to me today. You can either go out there and listen to foolish people who have not cast out not one demon successfully, who has never healed not one sick person successfully, who are just sitting with their perverse masturbating. Sorry about that, Holy Spirit. They ain't got nothing to do. They have nothing to do than to nail down and come after the people of God. Listen to me. One thing I will tell you about the water. Jesus used water all throughout scripture. He started with water in Genesis. And he said, the spirit of God hoovered over the water of the deep. In addition to that, let me give them one scripture that will satisfy them. 
And the Bible said that, amen, when the soldiers came to pass Jesus in his side, two things gushed out. One was blood and the other was water. Well, for this. That's all I have to say. Yeah, the Bible was, uh, was weird. Uh, we've been in book check so, over there. Be we encouraged. Bring your water tomorrow. tomorrow. Bring your water. Come and early. Bless even more of your waters yes. tomorrow. Come early. Come early tomorrow. Come early. Listen. Come early. Get your seat. Come early in the morning. Make sure you get your seat. We, there's a few chairs that we have to reserve, but different from that, as you come, we seat in you. And if any, I should give you a hard time. Let me know. I know. I know some of them carry favor, but I'm trying to get that out of them. So you come early and get your seat. I have a strong feeling that the number is going to rise on tomorrow morning. Because, so, you know, you got the people who only come on Sunday, so they come in. So we have tomorrow. There's no service tonight. That's no service what I tonight. To say. Tell all the friends who are still at the hotel. <laughs> well, watch the service over. Watch this morning service over. Tell them, go home and watch YouTube again. Yeah. But, um... We, we have no services tonight. We God. want to prepare. Apostle and I have been here on the altar yep. from earlier on in the week. We have not gone to our home. We want to go home tonight. Amen. But we are coming early in the morning. Oh, yeah. Early tomorrow morning. And we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Many demons were cast out here today. Oh, yeah. And Amen. yesterday. And, and listen Thursday. to me carefully. The teaching that Apostle did in the first segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, I beg you. Go and listen to it again. Amen. Go and listen to it again. Look at the scripture. Read it. And tomorrow, your eyes is going to even be more enlightened. You will not be disappointed. You'll never be defeated. And so, I want to pray for more water tomorrow. I want you to get the little purple one, because that one is going to do your house. Okay? You will go and take that one to the house. Some things in that house needs to be purged out, needs to be washed out, needs to be done away with. So even if you can get one of those or two or many ever you need, get them tomorrow. Amen. She's only a day. Everybody knows what it is. Mm -hmm. These are the Engedi waters what the Lord gave us. Amen. When he tells us it's over, it's over. When he tells us no more, it's no more. When he tells us to stop, stop. The oil of favor, I don't know many of you already went there and got it. Praise God. Amen. So it's there in the bookstore. We've already blessed it. Praise God. Amen. So it's available there. Yes. If you don't want to wait for tomorrow night. And even those of you that we told you, the first hundred people, please don't push old people on the line. And don't jump the line when you come late. <laughs> so it'll be available. And you can hold a spot. So it's tomorrow morning, Apostle. Tomorrow morning? At 10. Yeah, we start at 10, but doors tomorrow, open at 9. And tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, we start at 7. 7? Yeah, because uh, what, what, what God can do in here tomorrow night, we can need that. Really? We have the kids going to be dancing, the choir is going to be singing, everything is going to be happening. Oh, well, I'm going home. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So tomorrow morning, come, come early. God bless you, brother. This. God bless you. Go. Just before I do that, come early tomorrow. Like I said, the stuff in the bookstore, all the shirts, all of those things are in the bookstore. God bless you and be God. <laughs>